Good morning and welcome to downtown Norwalk, Connecticut for the March competition for Norwalk Havoc Robot League. We are so excited to bring you live robot fighting all day today. 110 robots, more than 200 fights. This will be at least a 12 hour live stream. Looking forward to it. This is our first event of the 2022 season. Now, all of these robots here today are trying to qualify for the December finals. That's the big one. We had an amazing finals in December. I would love to go and check out a highlights package from the three pound uh, finals there. This was between Silent Spring and Lynx, the two best Beetleweights in North America. Lynx from Southern California, Silent Spring from Jameson Go uh, from Boston. And uh, Lynx really won convincingly in December, ripping off the, uh, the main weapon of Silent Spring. Now, Jameson Go is back here again today, and hopefully we are uh, not going to be seeing the weapon uh, <laughs> fall off this time. Uh, now, um, we are going to, uh, we're, we're going to take a quick tour of, uh, of the new facility. Yeah. We've blown out about a million and a half walls here, Chris, and it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, uh, let's, let's bring you uh, a couple of shots from inside of the facility. All right, these are our four new main cages. Now, if you, uh, if, if you recall, last year we had one big box and two small cages. We've built a second big box. So now we're able to run twice as many 12 and 30 pound fights. And we've built another three pound cage that we are going to uh, be putting out there in the audience. Um, now, these extra cages should allow us to run faster. We should be able to fight robots as soon as they're ready. Better, faster, stronger. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing even more fights. Chris, I know that we've just been floored by uh, the changes here inside of the, uh, the, 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 this, this studio. Uh, what, what, are, what are your some of your kind of big takeaways from, from, uh, from the, the, you know? Well, one thing I, I know for a fact is that this is a sold out show today. They just opened the doors. We have fans trickling in already. I see some familiar faces out there. I'm, I'm super excited that, that you know, the, uh, the new spectator experience here uh, while uh, under construction has just grown exponentially. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's a new builder area upstairs. We're gonna take a look at that uh, throughout the day, but let's get into the tournament basics here. We're running three weight classes, as always, our three pound, 12 pound, and 30 pound brackets. It is a double elimination. Um, undefeated, the undefeated bracket and the elimination brackets uh, are for each weight class. Um, and, uh, you know, the final is the winner of the undefeated bracket versus the winner of the elimination bracket. These are, th these are three minute fights uh, with a possible 30 second encore if you'd like. Uh, and you either win by knockout or by forcing your opponent to tap out, ending the, uh, the match early. Now, judges' decisions are for fights that go for the full three minutes. And uh, we've got house bots here, and you get one free unstick if you get stuck up against the rail. Um, and the house bots also contain cameras, giving us a bot's eye view of the action. Now, joining us again here, we're very excited, is our pit reporter, Katie Osborne. Hello, Katie. Hey guys, I'm stoked to be back with you and the crew. And of course, this is a day that you and I are fresh faced and we are ready to go. But that's not what is in store for these robots. I was just talking to the builder of Starchild. He had mentioned to me that the key to today is longevity and attrition and staying involved and not actually being involved in the elimination cage is a key, but also if you are, how do you get yourself back able to compete? So it is a long day for these builders. It's a long day for these bots. And that is going to be something that we have to keep in mind is the endurance aspect of what it's in store. Fantastic. Now, um, I, I know that we've got a chance to, to walk around inside of the pits. Chris, did you see any robots up there that you're particularly excited by today? I, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, so I'll just leave this as redacted. Oh, redacted. Mm. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's check in with your fiance, Chris. Uh, Lindsay Bear, back in the uh, social media room. Oh my gosh, Lindsay, your lighting looks fantastic. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good, I must say. Same to you. Um, we have a lot of excited people over in the chat. If you're here or if you're watching at home, don't watch alone. Join the chat. There are tons of excited people talking, debating, 
disgusting strategy. I mean, if, if you are looking to talk with other like-minded people, by all means, join us in the YouTube live chat. Uh, we're all there. And then if you're interested in asking a question, we can get that answered for you. If you want to have a comment read on air, leave a super chat. That is a guaranteed way to make sure that what you have to say is going to be broadcasted live to everybody. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to get involved, but I think YouTube is one of the best ways. And uh, I'm just so excited for what we have in store. So many new bots. We have new cages. I mean, oh my goodness, it's, it's going to be a blast of a day. And I'm so excited that you're all here with us. Lindsay, uh, I know that we were asking people how, uh, where, where they're coming in from today. What's, uh, what's like the furthest we, we've seen? So we actually, we have people from Brazil. Whoa. We have uh, people from New Zealand. We have people from Arizona. <laughs> we have Florida. We're, we've got all the states covered. We have people from all over the world. So, you know, if, if you feel like maybe you're the only person in your community who likes robot combat, I'm willing to bet that there are other people and you can probably find them on the YouTube live chat. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Very but cool. it's wide reaching, which is amazing to see. Chris, I, I was expecting Brazil, but not Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cacti don't fight. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, so uh, ba back to some of these robots that we're most excited about. One of the really cool things about, uh, about this competition particularly is that uh, this is your, your really first shot at qualifying. Right. Um, typically, we take the top four uh, top performing bots, and later in the season, um, you'll see returning champions like Silent Spring, like Blackbird, like Shredded Bro, and they take those uh, first couple of spots. Um, and then we take maybe fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth. Here today, everybody's slate has been wiped clean, and they are all uh, fighting for those, those top four spots in each bracket. Yeah, and, and I think that's also why you see some familiar faces here today. There's a lot of teams out there that just, they're here, they do the grind, right? Yeah. They're here early in the season, they qualify early, and then they spend the rest of the season fine-tuning that bot, bringing it, getting the experience under their belt, and that's why they're champions. Yeah. Uh, some of the cool things that I saw upstairs. Um, so we have a lot of college teams here. We even have a high school team from Brooklyn. This is their first robot that they've ever built. They loaded up all of the kids in a school bus and drove them here to Norwalk. That's pretty punk rock. I like it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Um, and uh, all the builders, they can hear us upstairs. So uh, yeah, if you're uh, you know the high schoolers from Brooklyn, you know, good on you. Can't wait to see your fight. Um, now you were talking about redacted. Now is it is it classified? Can you say what the weapon is? If uh, if all goes according to plan, let's just say uh, it'll blast off. Oh. Okay. Or if things don't go to plan, it might blast off. Redacted is built by Casey Jermiason, right, from Minneapolis. Uh, one, of, one of our most interesting builders, just because he always stretches the, uh, the limits of what's possible. Yeah. Um, last year, you may have remembered uh, Casey Jermiason and his uh, wife, Casey Jermiason. They brought uh, a bot that was 90% made out of foam. Right, right. They really, like, just, uh, you know... It, it kind of boggles the mind when you think about it. It was all set for international shipping. It was just already, <laughs> you just need to slap yeah. the label on it, and yeah. it was ready to go. Yeah, throw it right into an Amazon box. Yeah, but it was a really interesting take on, on the, uh, the challenge of combat robotics. It, you know, uh, most vertical, horizontal types of weapons, high-energy weapons, just couldn't make it through the sheer volume of that much foam. Yeah. Very clever way to create armor when some other teams just say, hey, how, what's the hardest metal I can put on here? Or right, what's, what's the fastest I can spin my weapon? Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the rules in, in here in, in Havoc Robotics, um, they, uh, they can be uh, interpreted lots of different ways. And, and, you know, you have some teams that really capitalize that on, that on that. And I think that's what makes it just so fun to watch. Redacted is interesting. I'm intrigued. I also saw uh, last night the test for Casey's other robot, Firebug, mm. which is a flamethrower in the 12-pound full combat. Pretty excited about that. Every single time I see a flamethrower, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we've actually, we, we've got a couple of flamethrowers right. up, up there. Um, so, yeah. Hey, the people love fire. They love fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's good times. Yeah. I think, when I, when I think of last season, one of, the, one of the matches that stood out to me, uh, the, you know, the most was the one with uh, Dragon Princess. Yeah. Where we had a bot that was on fire for, I think, two solid minutes, maybe yeah. two and a half minutes, but yeah. still kept you know, plugging away. Yeah. Um, that, that is uh, arguably one of the best combat robotics fights I've seen ever. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, the entire Yenkaskis family, uh, they, they built Dragon Princess. They are here today. Um, and they're running a couple of new beetle weights, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, let's see, they're going to be running a beetle weight called Narcissist, kind of a strange name. Mm -hmm. And uh, a beetle weight called De Nightmare. And uh, so, yeah, and, and for, for Dominic Yankaskis, you know, he typically builds 30 pounders. So scaling it down to three pounders and running beetle weights is, uh, is going to be kind of a new experience uh, for him. All right, uh, let's take it over to Lindsay. Lindsay, I, I see that we have a super chat. Is that right? Already. We have a super chat already from none other than Jevin Woodrow from World of Woodrow over in the UK. He says, morning all, new broadcast area looks fantastic. I have to agree. Uh, NHRL going from strength to strength. Uh, have a great day of robot fighting all. Best of luck to the teams, all the crew, and to everyone watching. So I appreciate the kind words. Thank you, Jevin. Oh, my gosh, Jevin, you're the best. Um, listen, if you love combat robotics and you haven't subscribed to Jevin's channel, I mean, first subscribe to our channel, of course. But uh, he does This <laughs> Week in Robot Combat, mm -hmm. which is a, a weekly combat robotics news show. It's like the best combat robotics news show on the internet. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. If you want to uh, earn favors, call him Yevon. <laughs> well, that's the French way of saying mm. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so speaking of, I mean, like, like I, I, I'm just floored by what we've done between December and now in terms of the facility here. We blew out all of these walls. Now we have all of this new space for spectators. We also have this really cool thing called the Brett Experience. Have you seen this? I, I, I wish that I could break away from the desk and go play with the Brett yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brett, Brett is one of our, our house bots, and it's so incredibly popular. If you're here today in the audience and you want to drive one of these house bots yourself, go and check out the Brett experience. We rolled it out in December, and I heard that it was so popular that we ended up replacing the batteries for Brett 10 times in that competition. <laughs> Usually, you, we, we replace them like once every six hours, like in these actual cages, but there were so many people driving Brett constantly throughout the day in December that, um, that we burned out all the batteries. I don't see a Brett in there, though. I do see a little bit of, uh, of painter's tape. That's, uh... Uh, he's still in the green room. He's like <laughs> loading up on coffee and Fritos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brett, that, Brett refuses to, uh, to leave his trailer. No, yeah. He's... Listen, I don't, I don't say anything. We're not allowed to look them in the eyes. <laughs> right, um, right. But uh, it, it is really cool in there. And, you know, they'll, they'll take old uh, electronics and stuff that's uh, slated for recycling, and you can just go in there and destroy a, a Dell laptop from 20, uh, you know, 27. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is Norwalk, Connecticut. Oh, my God, it's a Beautiful, sunny, warm <laughs> Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah, wow. Now, we're, we're, we're right here uh, on the sea, I guess. Yeah, right? we're, I, I expect a whale to breach any moment. Norwalk is a famous fishing village. That's what I've heard. You know? <laughs> we, uh, well, we have the aquarium uh, you know, just around the corner here. Uh, you know, Nor South Norwalk is so incredible. Yeah. Uh, restaurants, things to do, uh, really great waterfront. And, of course, robot fighting. Yeah, yeah. Great restaurants. Great seafood and great robot fighting. All right, we're going to go over to uh, Katie Osborne, and uh, she's there with <laughs> Phantom 3 and Nick Buckholtz. You know, gentlemen, this is one of the things I think is so cool about these robots is we see them in different phases. And as Nick was just explaining to me, he kicked things off with Phantom. Yes, yeah, so Phantom back in 2016 uh, lasted about six seconds and then exploded. Um, Phantom 2 made it through 10 events, so I was pretty proud of it. And I wanted to uh, really up the ante with Phantom 3. Uh, unfortunately, last time in November, it didn't do so well because um, I had trouble getting prepared in time. But um, this time, we're much better prepared. The robot's much better tested. So uh, I'm confident for our first match. You talk about preparation. What did you do that was different between November and now? Um, we got the whole robot wired up a lot earlier and made sure everything was uh, just thoroughly tested. We did full drive test, full weapon test um, two weeks ago. Um, so since then, we've just been making spares and um, trying to make sure everything works properly. Now, in motorsport, where I come from, testing is something that you want to make sure it's dialed in exactly like it would be race mode, right? So when you're testing these bots, how, how accurate to battle mode are you? And, and do you walk a fine line just in case something sketch goes on? Um, so some people are really hardcore with their testing. I try not to damage the robot too much because I don't want to be repairing it before the event. Um, but I do try to make sure everything's tuned in. So like... I test my spin-up time, and then I change the settings to make sure that it's fat, as fast as it can be without overheating. 
Um, and then I'll like with the drive, I'll just ram it into stuff all day long and see if something breaks. And so far, nothing's gone wrong. So uh, hopefully, it works. Well, we're crossing fingers for a gentleman. Anything else that y'all have for Nick at this oh, point? Oh, yeah, Nick. All right, so like uh, Phantom 3, it looks like it's a miniature blood okay. sport. Is that, by, uh, is that by design? Is it blood sport by design? Um, it, it is similar to blood sport. We can see we've got the Keyblade, which yes. has been uh, a popular nice. um, addition to blood sport. So we're uh, testing out some new ideas related to that. All right, so there you have it. Anything else, gentlemen, as we keep moving in the green room? No, Nick is, Nick is one of our many BattleBots builders here today, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Phantom 3 in the box. Really is drawing, uh, you know, a as we continue to grow and evolve here, drawing some of the best, you know, talent in, in combat robotics out there. And I think um, as, as we continue to evolve through 2022, this is, uh, this is really going to be a spectacle. Yeah. Now I see loading into uh, to Cage 2 here. Is this 2 now? Uh, I see Sarah Parecki and Ratchet. And uh, Sarah is a BattleBots builder. She typically competes on P1 on BattleBots. And competing against Michael the Robot, which is a very intriguing name, Chris. Um, now, what, one of the cool things about Ratchet is uh, you've got an actual wrench there as right. a weapon. Not, not a Ratchet. <laughs> not a Ratchet. Now, I was talking to Sarah, and uh, she has run this robot before in other competitions. She ran it at Motorama just a couple months ago, and uh, there at Motorama, she had actually drilled through an actual wrench and turned that into a weapon, but found that, uh, you know, uh, household tools are not great weapons, you know, <laughs> like they're actually pretty difficult to work with. So she uh, machined her own kind of replica wrench here. So, um, so we're going to be seeing her running this, uh, this very cool looking weapon. Now we see people climbing into and out of the boxes. I think they're working on cameras inside of there. But Sarah is ready. Michael the robot looks like it's maybe an undercutter. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, Michael the robot, this will be uh, their first time uh, fighting here. I believe so. And uh, this is being run by Nathan Kai from Waltham, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, yeah, got uh, <laughs> Michael's got a pretty tough draw against Sarah because she's uh, she's a really great builder. Now, um, what we're seeing here, if, if you've never seen kind of like the the load into to a match, um, there are safety protocols that um, that need to take place. As you can see, Sarah there on the left is turning um, her robot on. That is how you turn it on. Um, they're going to close the box. There's her weapon lock. And then once they do that, they're going to move to their squares, maybe do a quick functional test. Sometimes they do what's called like a, a twitch test or something, where you're just kind of giving it a quick flick and, uh, and seeing if your, your bot is responsive. Um, obviously, we're very careful here about not firing up weapons until the box is uh, safely sealed. And you know these boxes are, are made out of um, nearly indestructible car uh, polycarbonate, uh, which yeah. gives us uh, great access to look in, uh, but not have to worry about things flying out uh, at our eyeballs. Ratchet looks like it's a mid cutter, while Michael the robot is an under cutter. Uh, upon closer look, it looks like that's a jolt kit. Um, so we've seen Portable Apocalypse around here before. That is also a jolt kit. Um, and really, it's going to come down to drive quality, kind of build quality, um, as well as um, really the, the height of that weapon. I think that Ratchet probably has the, the weight advantage on that, uh, that, that weaponized uh, <laughs> wrench there, Chris. Mm. Uh, I wonder if that's metric. <laughs> You know what? Uh, Sarah gave me the uh, the actual dimensions of the wrench, but I should have written it down. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> gonna gonna answer your question authoritatively. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, you know, we're we're going to see a really fast spin up. I think from uh, from Michael the robot. That is a really fantastic kit. The 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 the, the jolt kit, bolt kit. I don't know. There's Volt. It's a Volt. It's the Volt. It's a Volt kit. Yeah. All right. I see some thumbs up over there. It looks like this match is uh, getting ready to get underway. Eight, Our first seven, three pound match of the day, six, everyone. Right, let's let's hear some hikes. noise. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Right. right out of the bat, here we go. Looks like Michael the robot is having maybe some weapon issues. Oh, wow. Big hit. Wow, that, mecha, that, uh, oh. that weaponized wrench is really going to work here. Oh, my goodness. 
And you see Sarah just remaining absolutely planted to the floor with Ratchet. Mike on the robot hasn't made very much movement yet. Oh, and there's a wheel. There's a wheel on oh, no. Michael. Our plywood floors are seeing their first scuffs of the day. Yeah, and now with Michael the robot on its head, it's become an overhead cutter. And really? it's right now at the whims of this uh, of this heavy uh, horizontal bar. On oh, Ratchet. and there goes another wheel. I'm seeing two wheels here. Oh, oh no, Ratchet's lost a wheel, Chris. Oh my goodness. Okay, wait, Michael's lost both wheels. Ratchet's lost one wheel. Between two robots, there's one wheel in the box. And now we have our first uh, synchronized uh, a, a ballet performance uh, with Michael the Robot and Ratchet. Now, now the referees here are going to be looking for controlled motion. Right. Um, and now, now Michael the Robot is able, it seems, to move just through gyroscopic force. All right, who's getting counted out here? I can hear the ref. Is it Michael? Tap oh, out. and there we go. That's a tap out from Michael. Great, yeah. I, I, great I match. See, uh, Chris, I see the star next to Michael the Robot. Does that mean that Michael won that uh, or was Ratchet? Sarah, you, you won that, right? All right. Let's go here into an instant replay. We're going to be seeing a lot of instant replays here today. Ah, uh, there's, that, there's that other wheel that came off of Ratchet. Ratchet was in control uh, nine, nine sixteenths of this match. Wow, there is the tap out. Fantastic opening match for March Norwalk Havoc. Chris, your thoughts on that? Two brand new robots to the competition. Sarah Parecki's been running robots for multiple years. She's fought in multiple competitions. She's gone to BattleBots. Pretty tough draw for Michael the robot. I mean, I wouldn't. Well, I would have assumed that a wrench is going to be a heavy hitter. Yeah. Um, it looks like we've got uh, Katie Osborne over there talking with Sarah. Uh, Katie, let's uh, let's let's hear from Sarah. Yeah, I know Sarah kicked things off here with Ratchet. Congratulations on the first win here of the March uh, tournament. Nerves at the very beginning of that. You were kicking things off, and all eyes were on you. How'd that feel? Uh, it's good. It's always. It's always hard. I've done this for a few years now, um, but every fight you're still just getting the heart racing and you're just like, oh my God, it's time. <laughs> so yeah, good to get it off. And then taking it to the box here, you had a little bit of an advantage with a little bit of a height there, I think. And, and talking through with the gentleman over there, they're saying you kind of came in with that advantage. How did that help? Um, I mean, it's just always good to have your weapon at the right height. I think I could have started as an undercutter by flipping the robot over, okay. um, but I was thinking like I might be able to get her wheels better with it the right way up with the higher blade. So that's what I went for there. Um, and apparently it worked because I did get her wheels. <laughs> we talked about at the very, very beginning of the show, it's about longevity today. This is about endurance. How do you plan, plan for that, really? Um, well, I've got a bunch of spares. A bunch of the parts for this version of Ratchet were 3D printed, so I spent basically this entire week running our printer just trying to churn through and get as much things possible because you can't make those here. So I'm just hoping to have enough stuff. Cross some fingers for it, Ratchet winning here, gentlemen. All right. Now it looks like we've got robots loaded into box two. Okay, I think cage three is ready to fire off right now. Oh, yeah. They're, they've they've renamed all the cages, Chris. All right, cage three. Here we go. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> they look like little blips. Oh, yeah. This looks like a little multi-bot from Ethan Shipley. Oh, my goodness. And uh, facing who? Who are, who are they facing? Our graphic still says Ratchet versus Michael the Robot. Eight. Seven, oh. six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right. This looks like it may be RC Saw versus Insomnia. Is that right? That That's what I'm seeing right. on my uh, my screen here. This is a multi-bot versus a very powerful Ooh. finger tech beater bar. These little one and a half pound uh, robots with Ethan are going to be picked apart here. Oh I my goodness. I don't know if that's a blade of armor. Wow. Now I'm gonna start getting concerned if I see eyes uh, getting sprayed around inside the box. Oh no, there goes eye number one, Chris. Oh boy. Hindsight's 20-20. Sometimes 10-10. <laughs> 
All right, correction. This is copy and paste Mach 2 from Ethan Shipley and Amen Break from Nathan Kai. And uh, oh. copy and paste, I can see. They're really struggling to get some mobility here. I'm seeing multiple eyes. We're down to uh, just two eyes, Chris, between two robots. These robots, they're winking at me, Chris. <laughs> no doubt. Now, Amen Break is, a, is a, a really classic design. It works so well in the beetle weights. You've got this uh, this gold finger tech beater bar, and every single time that they make, oh my gosh, there's a wheel. Oh, copy and paste is being picked apart. Oh, I think oh. that's maybe from the red robot there, Chris. Oh no. Oh, oh no! no! He's already dead. Uh, I can see a battery. Yeah. Is Ethan going to tap out? <laughs> All right. I think that, that looks this like was that a tap out. Is a tap out from Ethan. Tap out. Tap out. Wow. All right. That's a pretty destructive match there. You can see like one part of the uh, of the drive pod there from uh, from copy and paste Mach two, and the winner here is Amen Break. Let's take a look at the highlights from this match. Wow, Amen. Amen break is like really just you coming just in and just like taking apart these robots for Ethan. <laughs> Fantastic. You just don't want to be on the business end of a beater bar like that. Wow, incredible. Um, I love to see destruction, Chris. Um, and Ethan is such a good sport about it. He's brought about, a, you know, probably a half a dozen robots here today. We're going to be seeing him um, multiple times. And um, the, uh, and, and you're seeing really like our first finger tech beater bar. First of many, I would say here. It's a very, very popular design. Yeah, it, they're resilient, they're tough. The, the weapon uh, is capable of dealing out a lot of damage. And so, it, you know, it's part of the, uh, the meta of the sport right now. Yeah. Now, very exciting. Uh, loading here into cage two, we have two school teams. Now, RC Saw, these are the high schoolers from Brooklyn who came in today. This is their very first robot. Hitting the ready button there. Versus Insomnia from Florida Polytechnic. Those are the purple robots over here. Now, one of the interesting things here is RC Saw is a multi bot. There's Eight, three ant seven, weights in there. Six, wow. Five, yeah, right. Four, three. It's like the Super Friends. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, wow, this is great. I love this. Oh! Ant weights are coming in. They made contact here with RC Saw. RC Saw has still not left the pink corner. And every single time they, uh, these ant weights are hitting the, uh, the beetle, they're going careening off. I see the third ant weight is just dead there in the blue square. Maybe he's just hanging back and they gotta tap him in. Are there any weapons running in box two, Chris? I don't know. It looks like there could be even some kind of radio control issue. Now, the, uh, th so our seesaw here um, is, Spinning here in the corner. This is a this is based off of a championship uh, ant weight design. This was a design that won first place at Robot Ruckus, um, and uh, they figured, hey, let's build three of them and uh, bring them here to Norwalk Havoc. Well, it's so proven run it's it as proven a to be an effective formula in the past. If you were, if you remember, waterproof sealant uh, did uh, did very well with with that type of approach. That's true. Minute 45 here left in this match. It looks like the weapon from Insomnia is dead, but pretty good drive. Chris, this looks like a uh, like drive you'd be familiar with. A lot of backwards and forwards, Chris. <laughs> You're only saying that because I ran into your garbage cans the other night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one will very likely go to the judges. So we're going to, oh my gosh, oh. the weapon from Insomnia is back. Oh no. Peeling off wheels. The high schoolers are doing it, Chris. I can't believe it. Wow. Where was that weapon for the first half of this match? Incredible. Now with a minute left, they're going to see if they can try to disable as many of these ant weights as they can. With weapons down, really, the, uh, these these ant weights from RC Star. Uh, and 
it looks like a few just, of them are just sitting targets right now. One is yeah. inverted, and, and one is definitely having some kind of control issue. Uh, this is not where you want to be with wow. a, a high-energy horizontal spinner now fully operational. 35 seconds left here in this match. Now, Ken, here we go. The robot is still moving. I think these high schoolers might be winning their very first match. Oh, amazing. This is the first robot they've ever built, Chris. Wow. This is oh. very exciting. 15 seconds left here. Four, three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapons, high schoolers, and drive to the door. This one goes to the judges. All right, we saw two extremely mobile oh. ant weights going up against the immovable force of this beetle weight. RC saw from Science Skill Center High School in Brooklyn. Now they loaded up all of the kids here today, brought them here in a school bus. They stopped for avocado toast on their way out. It looks like they are on track to win their very first combat robot match ever. Super exciting, I love that. Now for Florida Polytechnic, this is a, uh, this is a tough, <laughs> tough lesson in the difference between ant weights and beetle weights. Like uh, a one pound robot going up against a three pound robot, very difficult to win. Yeah, I mean, even though each 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 of these bots kind of featured that one of those high energy vertical spinners, yeah. you know, you were kind of putting it up against an immovable object, and a lot of that energy is going to get re, uh, you know, kind of diverted back uh, into your bot, sending you to the moon. Yeah, very exciting though. I I can't imagine the nerves that you must be feeling as a high school team building your first robot, coming to your first competition, l like getting up probably at five o'clock in the morning to get here. And, um, and then going home with your very first win. That is huge. They're staying alive in the undefeated bracket, and uh, they're going to move on to round two. And uh, yeah, I'm really, this is a, this is a storyline definitely to watch yeah. here today. They, they certainly have an uphill battle today. There are some great bots uh, in the weight class, and you know, I, I wish them the best of luck. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny when, when you see some of the designs, uh, it's almost like a different sport. You know what I mean? Uh, like, we're going to be seeing bots later today, like Silent Spring, like Shred It Bro, uh, that are just absolute killers in the box. Right. But I think it's really cool that we still have space for brand new builders to come here, try out new designs, get a couple of fights under their belts. If these kids can stick with it, this is a winning formula for uh, for the rest of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I love the uh, the diversity that comes with having so many different types of unique builders here at the competition, you know, because a, a, a group of high school sc students are going to approach the challenge much differently than someone who's been embedded in the sport for 10 years. Yeah. We're going to go over to Katie Osborne. She's got uh, our seesaw here, the high schoolers from Brooklyn. Yeah, you're talking about these guys who are going to approach it a little bit differently, and I think that's exactly what Enrique and the team did. What was the approach going into this? Well, the approach was pretty much random, but what I hoped for was at least trying to aim for the wheels, because since there's three of them and they're both small, they, and since they're like wide, they're easy to hit with the weapon. Plus, since if, if they didn't run into me, we probably would have lost. But if all three of them went, they probably would have won. And do you feel like the weapons are working there continuously throughout? You feel like it's a good bot right now? Yeah, it's a good bot so far. It can withstand hits, and it actually managed to survive to still like move. But yeah, it's it's kind of scary, but everything went well. A scary day for these guys, but a long day ahead of them. And actually, Enrique had said, hey, my hands are shaking, my legs are shaking as they wrap that up. I get it. Uh, I, I've I've done like kind of a first time, like I, the first time I ever drove. It was it was like I was in crisis, Chris. You know, uh, like you can't imagine the nerves, like the adrenaline that's flowing through your body when you're about to to face off, you know, against a you know uh, an opponent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's amazing, and and to get their first win, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, I see that we're loading into cage two. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Now we've got Saber versus Pine Victus. 
Now Pine Victus is in the uh, this kind of weird circular shaped robot. And uh, Saber here is the black and blue robot. Whoa, <laughs> there goes a piece of the, uh, the wood frame of the battle box. Oh, wow, oh, here that's, we go. That's adorable. This is Pine Victus, uh, and it looks like it's a very young driver, Chris. Oh, I oh, see, there's I fire. see fire. What? <laughs> and then I see you, Luke. <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh, no. Uh, Luke, your visage is uh, currently uh, loose on the, on the floor of the uh, of the box. Saber is just uh, taking it straight to its own mini bots. Now it's really interesting, Pine Victus. I love to see a flamethrower, and you can hear it inside of the box, like they're trying to get that igniter going. Let's see if we can get a big, nice, long. Flight. Oh! Whoa! Oh, I almost caught that. Huge shit! Just popping Pine Victus up into the air. But it looks like the drive on Saber could be. Uh, oh, oh, he's no. high centered. <laughs> oh, oh he's bug. high centered on his own robots. Oh, no. All Let's right. Let's see if there. he gets his one free unstick from our house bot. Wow, it looks like the house bot's not going to be saving the robot. What? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my goodness, Jeremy, it's happening! Oh, it... Knockout. And that's it. That is a knockout. Oh. Your winner is Pine Victus. Wow. Good fight. Oh. Wow, incredible. All right, Pine Victus won its very first match, but uh, through a little bit of luck, I would say. Yeah, I, or a lot of bit of luck. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see a flamethrower. I don't know how I feel about the house bot uh, not coming in to save Saber. Let's take a look at the beginning of this match. Um, kind of set the, uh, the tone early on. Oh, yeah. Now, I loved this huge hit from Saber where Pine oh. Victus went flying up into the, uh, the ceiling. But it wasn't enough. Saber got high centered on itself. Eight, Unlucky seven, way to go. Six. Five, four, three. All right, we're right, going to go over to page two. two. We've got one, Twisty versus fight, Indecisive Mess. Fight. Twisty here is this black robot run by Santana Starks from Chicago. Indecisive Mess, brand new robot here. I have not seen this one here before. Oh, and it looks like Indecisive Mess is dead, Chris. Oh, boy. Twisty is... Uh, Intent on, uh, on breaking this robot, peeling off its wheels. There he goes, the one free on stick. Santana smells blood in the water, Chris. Yeah, it looks like that 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 belt oh, is gone there on goes the wheel. Mess. Oh, oh no! Tap out before it's too late. Oof. All right, we've got a tap, tap out from out. Indecisive Mess. Your winner is Santana Starks and Twisty. Tap out. All right, uh, we're going to check in with tap Katie. Out. Well, in talking with Twisty right before he he and the bot went out, he was saying that uh, he wanted to do something a little bit different. It was a custom beater bar, and I asked him why. He said because there's enough beater bars in the system here and, and out, out here competing, and he just wanted it to stand out a little bit. And come on, let's go. How, how did your beater bar stand out amongst the rest Dude. here? Oh, so. I, I, I think it did great. Um, it's a brand, brand new beater bar. Uh, awesome. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Simply that guy is awesome. All right. Fantastic opening match for Twisty. Santana Starks, uh, pain train team member Santana Starks. I'm really looking forward to seeing his performance today. He is an independent wrestler from Chicago, Chris. So uh, he is no stranger to combat sports. He doesn't need any other wrestlers. <laughs> right. He's independent. Wow, what a great shot here of our, our uh, audience. Oh my gosh, go Harvester. Wow, is this from the Hunter family? Hello, Derby, Connecticut. They have been coming here to Norwalk Havoc all last year. I think they went to five of our qualifying events and they decided we are going to build our first combat robot. Harvester is the name. Really looking forward to seeing that robot later today. 
All right, we've got a good shot here of our green room. This is where builders go when they're getting ready to fight. They've been called down. All of their robots are ready. I can see Angel Vidal there in the background. Oh. All right, we're going to check in quickly with Lindsay. Lindsay, it looks like you've got two Super Chats. Yes, we have two Super Chats. One from Curtis Honeycutt, who says shout out to bots and stuff. Uh, team members Seth Schaefer, Brian Boxel, and Nick Buckholt. So shout out to them. And then also we have another Super Chat from Blue Puma 14, who says, wow, what a makeover. The Property Brothers would be proud. How about a shout out for the people who came for the shortest distance? I walked in from home. So wow, <laughs> pretty good deal for Blue Puma 14. Oh my gosh, it's Eddie Friend. He, he lives within walking distance of Norwalk Kavik. And as a combat robotics fan, I mean, how lucky is that? <laughs> they built like the world's right. most amazing right. combat robotics facility in your neighborhood, Eddie. It'd be That's like amazing. if they opened a pizza factory in my backyard. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, love Eddie, and I'm so glad that he's here. I hear that Eddie might be building a robot later this year. Oh, that'd be exciting. And he won't even have to get a hotel. He can just, like, wheel the robot down the road. <laughs> just get know? a shopping cart. You're yeah, good. Yeah, start straight into a backpack, Chris. All right. Uh, oh, my gosh, it's Harvester. I was just talking about Harvester. We are going to see Harvester here in the, uh, the pink corner. It is this bright neon green weapon disc here of Harvester. You can see five blades running across it, looking kind of like a combine Harvester, wouldn't you say? That, that That's accurate. Now, interestingly, Jayla here from Northwestern is also running a stacked disc weapon. So it's kind of like five blades versus three blades. Jayla is the uh, the robot here in white, Eight, and Harvester seven, is neon six, green. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Ooh, and you really hear these bots go. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, Harvester keeps showing inside. I don't know how I feel about that now, oh, and Harvester's won the first exchange. Popping Jayla in the air, and I think the Jayla weapon is on Jayla. right now. Don't now, believe that they're gonna be able to fire up that weapon if they are in this, uh, this upside down position. Now, with Jayla upside down, I think you're right. I think it's going to be very difficult for them to self-ride. You've got to have a huge weapon motor to do that, especially with these tiny little stacked discs. Now, is the weapon on Harvester going? It sounds very silent in there. It looks like the weapon on Harvester is down. Sometimes you'll see this happen in an early exchange with uh, with two high energy weapons like this, um, and then you get the, the the two minute. Who's gonna have the control? Who's gonna have that? Um, you know the, the pins under their belt to uh, win the match in the eyes of the judges. Yeah, pretty incredible here. These are two brand new robots, and uh, this is their first time in the box for for these robots. And. Um, like Harvester really is quite a bit more mobile and has a good drive, able to push Jayla there into the corner. With a There's a good pin. And a half. Now they can hold this pin for 10 seconds before they have to release. And every single time that you can land a successful pin on your opponent, you're showing aggression and control. Now I swear we're going to go to a judge's decision at some point here today, Chris. We're going to meet our judges, uh, judges panel. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it might be this this very match here. With weapons down, the uh, the chance of damaging your robot is pretty scant. Looks like Harvester may be winning its very first match ever, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. But with 45 seconds on the clock, you never know what can happen in combat robotics. There's a chance that one bot could explode. Yeah. Uh, batteries, you know, they have a tendency to flare up sometimes. Motors can burn out. You Great never know. pushing power on Harvester. Look at that. Landing pin after pin. This is how you win a robot match. Yeah, just the drive is not there on Jayla. To the kids from Northwestern, they typically build 15 pounders out in the Midwest. This is uh, one of their first beetle waves. 
With 10 seconds left here in this match, this one will go to the judges. Three, two, one, that's the match. Drive to the door if you can. This one will go to the judges. Okay. Chris, you can see a little shot of me there in the back. Well, okay. Oh, there we are. Um, Chris, really good, uh, another great kind of uh, There's that big exchange match. right off the bat that uh, kind of uh, established um, Harvester as the uh, uh, as, as kind of the, uh, the the champion of the of the uh, the push and pull, yeah. um, knocking out its opponent's weapon. I think one of the interesting things about this match was that we saw some of the challenges around a stacked weapon blade. Um, you don't have the same kind of mass that you have right. with a solid blade, and if you're not able to spin it up fast enough, it is impossible to get back onto your head if you're flipped over. Right, and that is their goal. By, uh, by reducing the, uh, the mass on that weapon, uh, but retaining its size, you can spin it up faster. All right, we've just heard uh, over the radio that this is a win for Harvester by judge's decision. Uh, and uh, we're going to go and check in here with Katie. Well, for the up and coming battle here, we have Hunter who has D Nightmare. Now remember, he and his family have had quite a few bots over the years here. This is a new one. He says he still has the oldies but goodies uh, in the lineup today, but he's out trying with D Nightmare. Meanwhile, not a Hornet. That one, half the bot hasn't actually been fixed since the last competition. His goal is to distract while the other half really goes after the Nightmare. We'll see what happens. All right, the Nightmare is an interesting robot. I'm really looking forward to seeing this. This is a close interpretation of the rules of what an active weapon is here from Dominic Yankaskis. Uh, this is a D2 kit that has a tiny little lifter. Just a little, little teeny tiny lift. We're gonna, Eight, see, if, uh, <laughs> we're gonna seven, see if it works here. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, whoa! Oh, now that is a box rush. That is a perfect box rush from Hunter Yankaskis and to Nightmare. This massive black beetle weight here. Pushing Not a Hornet into the corner. Not a Hornet run by Ethan Shipley. We saw him earlier. And um, really, Hunter Yankaskis showing an absolute punishing drive. Now, this is a match that uh, Nate Franklin would love because. Uh, that's a good push bot. And uh, Nate, I guess, uh, you know, take a closer look at this because the Yankaskis family has turned a D2 kit into a, a miniature lifter. There's like this little spike that comes out of the bottom of the robot right. so they can fire it and lift a little bit. I wonder if Austin McCord's going to be happy with this robot after this match. These are two, two wedges, Chris. <laughs> These are weapons in name only, Chris. And it looks like the spinner, looks like that's a, like a Weta egg beater spinner on Not a Hornet has not fired up. And we are just seeing absolutely suffocating drive style from Hunter Yankaskis. He's an amazing, amazing driver. Really interesting uh, wheels that we also see on The Nightmare. Yeah. Big kind of like monster truck style wheels. Great engagement with the floor. So much speed. This is an eight foot by eight foot box, and uh, I think the Nightmare is able to cross the box in under a second. It really is quite fast. What you see here is Andrew Caskis remaining squared up with his opponent. And, oh, that egg beater is just dead in the corner, Chris. I don't think it's fired yeah. up at all. It's, it's spent most of the fight uh, right there in that corner. I don't believe it even left. Now, without super destructive kinetic weapons, I think that this one will very likely go to the judges with 60 seconds left. A little wedge on wedge action, Chris. <laughs> this is the fight that Austin McCord sees in his nightmares, Chris, right? In his the nightmares? Oh, there you go, the nightmare. Well done, Chris. Yeah, I know. I, I worked on that joke last night. I had to sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, let's see that weapon go. I want to see that tiny little uh, spike come out of the bottom of the... Oh, there yeah! we go! Oh, I love it. I love it. 25 seconds left. Ooh. My goodness. 
These are really aggressive control forks. You can kind of see these. Uh, they look very similar to uh, Dragon Princess from last season. And uh, it's like Hunter and Cascus really will be coming away here with a win as we go to the judges. All right, uh, robots, make your way to the door if you can. Let's take a look here. Look at oh, that box rush. Incredible box rush. Look at that. Incredible speed, really just full send from Hunter Yankaskis. One of the best young drivers here at Norwalk Havoc. And what you saw here was even, even when it came down to just one push bot against another, they, uh, you know, Hunter was able to remain squared up with his opponent. And uh, I would be very, very uh, surprised if he did not win the judge's decision here. Our right. judges are deliberating. Um, What's I think there to deliberate about, Chris? I, I mean, think that was a great, great match. Well, right. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's when you have a multi-bot configuration like that and you're, uh, you know, you, you do actually um, stand to win some more damage points, but when your damage bot isn't working. All right. We're going to kick it over to Lindsay, who uh, has our decision. Yes, so by judge's decision, the winner is De Nightmare. Oh, my gosh. That de nice did job. not surprise me at all. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Uh, um, did not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not my strength. Um, yeah, but I mean, um, I, I, I was talking to Dominic Yankaskis last night. He said that he is interested in uh, modifying D2 kits in the future, possibly releasing these as uh, oh. send kit send files so that other people can build to nightmares of their own. <laughs> All right, uh, on up to cage three. We've got uh, Dadum versus seven, Tothic. Six, oh, Tothic. Five. Four, this is one of three, our first championship two, robots of one, the day. Fight. Facing and finger tech egg beater in Dedumps. Oh no. Topic here is running forks. the uh, the long forks, this red and black robot. Overhead cutter and successfully pinning his opponent up against the wall. But are they able to fire up that weapon? I have yet see. to see it spin. Oh, oh there we there go. It's spinning. There here we, we go. go. Oh. Are we going to see a big hit oh. here, Chris? Oh. 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 Yes. Oh. Incredible. Is it in there? Sinking that robot straight into Badamts and driving the robot all over the box. Wow. Topic run by Team WPI, one of the most dominant teams here at Norwalk Havoc. And you Tap can see out. why. A tap out from Badamps. It's Dedamps. And uh, Tothic here is your winner. Incredible. Now, I would love to see an instant replay of that, uh, that big hit. Just sinking wow. that weapon right yeah. into the, uh, the weapon housing of Badumps. This is uh, something I'm, that we see a lot from like Jameson Go and, and, and Sawblaze and, and Megatron, where you get that perfect pin, yeah. and then you're very, uh, you're very calculated when it's time to spin up your weapon and to actually throw that arm, because you know it is a fragile weapon, and you want to make sure that you have everything perfectly going according to plan before you fire it. Tothic and here we run. come, here we see that pin about to happen. Yeah. Tothic run here by Christian Cooper from Team WPI. And we see the driver of Badamts making his weapon safe. Team WPI going in, checking the robot. I wonder if they're, oh, they are. They had to separate those robots, Chris. Wow, amazing. Great match. Uh, I love seeing Tothic, a.k.a. Too Thick, all right? Um, and, uh, and and really that kind of cinematic shot there at the end. Right. Amazing. Yeah, uh, you're building suspense, the pin, the hit. I, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's really fun to watch. Now, why are these kind of overhead saws so effective at this weight class? That's a, I mean, that's a great question. Um, you know, you'll see oftentimes most of the bots that do put some weight into armor will often do it with a front wedge or uh, some kind of heavy uh, uh, plow in the front. Yeah. Uh, and this uh, this overhead, like kind of articulating arm, you're able to uh, kind of drop that weapon down on top of parts of bots that are not typically armored. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
The best place to hit the robot, uh, your opponent really is either the back of the robots or the top of the robot. Um, there's usually a ton of armor in the front, and uh, you're not going to be able to break through that. But we've seen here top plates get shattered by these overhead, uh, you know, attack bots. Looking like uh, we've loaded here into cage two. It looks like it's Tarain versus Clyde. Eight, seven, These builders are six, ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Torrain here is this uh, this white this white robot here run by Team WPI. Alex Johnson who also competes on robots. And Clyde is this uh, this green, very wide robot. Oh, and it's a fire bot, Chris. Wow. Oh, you gotta love that. Clyde is created uh, by Gabriel Brown, who's here all the way from Austin, Texas. Wow, awesome. Wow, huge flames. Oh. Chris, it looks like a barbecue in there. Well, it's from Austin. There you go. And uh, yeah, that was about a five second pin. Wow. Oh, again! My God, Chris, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> wow. And it looks like wow. we've got something burning oh, inside of goodness. the box. Is that a piece of wood? Is that a piece of plastic? Should we be concerned, Chris? What an interesting bot. Wow, and really Clyde is just taking it straight to Taurine, which is an incredibly good robot. Landing these pins, <gasps> torching oh them goodness. all the way. Amazing. Oh, oh, this is a fight for the highlight reel. Absolutely, Chris. We're seeing uh, some smoke come from inside Torin. It could be uh, it could be a you know weapon motor, it could be a, like a, a belt on that uh, that horizontal spinner. The uh, weapon on Torin is still running and just running straight into that plow. This is a robot that does not like a chalky plow, Chris. <laughs> wow. It's a it's a very interesting build. Um, you know, it's it's a very wide stance, allowing them to kind of turn on a dime. Uh, that front wedge, um, it's almost reminiscent of a Smee. Oh, Chris, I love that Torin went into the box looking like a stormtrooper, and it's coming out looking like a burnt marshmallow. Look at this thing. It's changing color yeah. in front of our very eyes, Chris. It's starting to look like an old Game Boy. 50 seconds left here in this match. Oh my god, I don't know if this robot's going to die at all. This one may be going to the judges. Torin is now, oh. it's a tan color, Chris. <laughs> wow. 30 seconds left. I don't think Clyde could have come up with a better matchup here. A robot that can be torched. Wow. Amazing. 15 seconds left here in this fight. Oh no, and Clyde is in the corner. Will it oh. be saved? Well, with their one uh, bump from the house bot, it looks like they're going to be able to beat the clock in case they were stuck. Here we go. Inverted. This is Tori's opportunity. I don't think it's happening. This one will go to the judges. Wow. Incredible. Oh, the audience loves Clyde. Look at that. Wow. Now let's see this instant replay here. Torrin going, bouncing around inside of the box. Every single time that Clyde landed one of these pins, they turned on the flamethrower. Wow. Just the flames licking up the side of the, the box. Oh, oh my goodness. Ooh, I love it. Wow. That's a that's a three or four foot flame going up the side of the box. That is incredible. Yeah. Now Clyde loves to uh, to to face a horizontal spinner. Horizontal spinners hate a, a big chunky wedge, and uh, I think this one will uh, very much be a Clyde win. All right, we're gonna go over to Katie. Katie Osborne. Uh, yeah, what, what do you have for us? Well, we got a little activity over here. In fact, we got some robots with uh, with the doors open. Gabriel here, um, builder and, and uh, driver of Clyde. Do com opponents stand a chance when you throw some flames? Um, I think so. Uh, really, we won that wedge with our that match with our wedge. Um, that's, I mean, our fire didn't seem to do a whole lot that match. Uh, our wedge configuration, our fire is a little farther from 
uh, where we're actually pinning our opponents so the fire can't do as much. Uh, when we're against horizontal, when we're, when we're against verticals, when we have our wedgelets, we think we, our fire can do a bit more damage. Um, yeah. What I thought was really cool, like you guys were pointing out, uh, Torian looked a little bit like a, a Game Boy by the end of that thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that went really well. Thank you. <laughs> guys. All right. I think a Game Boy might be a little bit before his time. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what do you think? Maybe Game Boy Advance? Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sega Game Switch? Gear? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, love that match. It, it looked like they were cooking a marshmallow it in was, there. That is, that, is, uh, that is what makes this sport so much fun. All right, let's check in with Lindsay for the judge's decision. Lindsay, how did this one go? Well, you're probably not surprised. The damage did it for this one, and Clyde is the winner unanimously. Eight, wow, amazing. Seven, All right, six, on over to cage five, three. This is going to four, be the Chort three, versus Phantom two, three. One. Fight, robots, fight. Whoa. Oh, man. Phantom three is this purple robot here, purple and black robot run by Dick Buckholtz from Team Bots and Stuff on BattleBots. They run Blood Sports. And wow, they've tipped the short onto its head. Which is now, it looks like it's almost missing a wheel. It looks like it's missing a wheel. Uh, they're giving him an opportunity, oh, I the, think. The belt on short is off as well. Wow, one hit KO here. Are they going to try to, oh, it looks like they're going to try to do the unstick and keep this match going. That's, uh, that is very ambitious for a one-wheeled vertical spinner. All right, and I can hear the count out here at cage side. The referee is counting out the short, and it looks like this will be a phantom three now we see that win. Knockout. That keyblade uh, dance. Knockout. Very Incredible. interesting configuration, very similar to Bloodsport. This was a fast match. Let's see a fast replay oh, here. Oh, look, there's that belt right off the bat. So that belt came off, the weapon died. Oh, and hit it right there on the side and uh, ripped off the wheel, leaving Chort on its head. So we are going to uh, see Chort get kicked down into the uh, elimination, elimination bracket. bracket. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're trying not to say winner and loser bracket this time around, because, uh, I don't know, we don't want to put like values on it, you know? Everyone has to go down into the elimination bracket, right? And the people who do, they're not losers, Chris. I mean, they're all winners because they built robots, right? That's um, true. So, so yeah. So elimination bracket uh, for the short. They're in round one. And uh, Phantom 3 and Nick Buchholz from Bloodsport will be advancing. Um, I love to see, you know, a design go through iterations and find success. Uh, especially with with a with a new design, um, I, I don't think Phantom Two was as competitive as Phantom Three. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this match really showed some extreme toughness uh, for for that robot. It was a real Phantom Menace. We're gonna go over to Cage Two here. Loading in, I can see William Marchese and Sea Dragon's Roar, and Lars Elliot, our very aggressive 13-year-old driver, eighth grader here. Uh, with jet lag. Now jet lag here is in the pink corner, running a Weta um, hub spinner. Look at that thing! Ooh, it's mean. Sea Dragon's Roar is the blue and white robot, run by William, who is wearing pink. And William left his weapon lock in there, Chris. <laughs> it's an interesting strategy. Let's see if it works, Cotton. Now I was talking to William, and his parents are here in the audience today. Um, so this is very cool. They get to see their, uh, their son fight an eighth grader. <laughs> um, jet lag, amazing, amazing driver here. And I cannot wait to see, uh, see this match. Every single one of Lars's matches in 2021 were like among my favorites. So uh, let's see if this new and improved Sea Dragon's War can, can uh, pull out the win here. Eight, seven, six. Five, four, it's a very interesting three, uh, drum two, uh, configuration. One, it's not five, quite a drum, it's not quite five. a neck beater. Oh, good speed from both of these robots oh, right out of the box. Oh, oh and Sea Dragon's Roar has successfully oh. gotten under oh. jet lag, and there's smoke pouring out of jet lag. Oh, what could it be? Wow. Ah, uh, they both seem to be operational. Lars has reset himself. 
Ah, but it looks like the belt is off on the vertical spinner. Yes, good eye there, Chris. The weapon on Sea Dragon Swirl is down. Lars has successfully got William up against the rails. But it also looks like the weapon on, uh, on Jetlag is down, doesn't it? I don't know if that it's, weapon's coming back, Chris. It is possible. It's interesting because these two weapons could not be more different. The weapon on Jetlag is huge. It is chunky. And uh, really, you're seeing incredible uh, drive ability from, from Sea Dragon's War. This is a four-wheel drive robot this time around. And uh, with great pushing power, he's hoping to land a bunch of pins, which could be difficult against Lars. Lars is an amazing, amazing driver. With both of these weapons down, this has come down to a pushing match. And that pushing oh. match, it is, it is pretty even, evenly matched. Um, you know, the four-wheel drive has a little bit more of that traction, but the two heavier wheels are also uh, capable of um, some serious pushback as well. So it's like almost locked in a dead heat. Um, the, the, Weta, the Weta drum on jet lag is a hub motor. So the motor sits inside of that drum. And one of the challenges there is if you have a huge impact, you uh, you can kill the motor that's inside of your, your weapon. That's right. And one of the benefits, if you see this with Sea Dragon's Roar, is uh, that you don't have any belts to worry about. Um, belts running loose, belts getting clipped. We've got 50 seconds left here. Looks like we're seeing a couple of challenges with our graphics here today, <laughs> Chris. Hopefully we can get these fixed. Another good pin there from Sea Dragon's Roar on jet lag. Wow, and I really hope that uh, the judges are counting these pins because it has been a back and forth pin fest here between these two robots. Wow, great pushing power from William and Sea Dragon's Roar. Fifteen, 15 seconds, seconds left, left here. The match. Three, two, one, that's the match. Turn off your dead weapons, <laughs> I guess, and drive to the door. This one will go to the judges. All right, let's take a look here at our replay package. Ooh, good hit. This was that opening yeah. exchange yep. where uh, Sea Dragons were flipped jet lag into the air and they had to get unstuck but the weapons here were dead. And, um, oh, there you see William. He's ready, I love it. <laughs> Will that be enough for William to take home the win? Let's check in with Lindsay. All right, hi, we have a couple super chats here. Oh. One is referring back to the Clyde match, I have to assume. This is one is from Pearl Gray, who says, Texas barbecue. Oh, there yeah. we go. We got a little bot brisket going on. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of good, a lot of good uh, little puns going on. Someone said we need some toast. Let's uh, make some buttered bread. Um, we have another super chat from Andrew W. Who says, "All I ask is for crystal chandeliers be hung from the bot ceiling, and when they get hit, the bots get extra points." So I don't know. Maybe that's something to think for future events. You know, hang a chandelier in there, and uh, most points for crystals. You know getting hit. I, it could be kind of fun. Love that idea, Andrew. Keep them coming. Love it. Um, yeah, so that was a great match. I, I know that the judges are still deliberating, and um, it, it, it was really like back and forth. You can see a, a, an incredible driver up against incredible drive, you know? Right. Um, let's, uh, let's go in and check in with Katie Osborne. Well, Dr. Frankenpine here, Ishan, who's the builder and driver of it from the University of Maryland, had a really exciting last couple of days. In fact, he ordered an 85 tooth belt from Canada, unfortunately got stuck in customs along the way. So just yesterday, he was trying to figure out how to make this thing work. He says he used a bunch of sheet metal, some of the bearings he had, most of his tools. But the good news is that bot is in the box and he's getting ready to go. One thing to keep in mind, though, he did grab some uh, a wrench here just before we, we were getting started and was working on a few different things with the belt system. So keep in mind that that is happening with Dr. Frankenpine. All right, Dr. Frankenpine, appropriately named, right? Pulling parts from all over the place. 
putting them into a, you know, a cursed creation. <laughs> you know? What, but what, what, what about the pine? <laughs> well, they got to shove a whole tree in there, Chris. That's true. Um, all right. We've got the box locked here. Dr. Frankenpine versus Vacuum. First, let's go back to Lindsay with the judge's oh, decision uh, between Sea Dragon's Roar and Jetlag. We're on the edge of our seats, Lindsay. Tell us who won. All right, drum roll, please. The winner of that fight is Sea Dragon's Roar. Wow, William Marquez. Okay, awesome. William advances and uh, Jetlag gets kicked seven, down into the, uh, six, the loser's oh, bracket. Five, it looks like we're ready four, to go here in cage three, number three. Two, one. Fight, robot. Oh. Fight. oh. <laughs> It's always best to check your surroundings when firing up a horizontal spinner. Wow, incredible. Oh, and I can see that uh, part of the wheel guard on vacuum has been peeled away. But Dr. Frankenpine is not looking right. Oh, no. oh the weapon housing's been torn out of Dr. Frankenpine. Oh. Stuck up against the rail. We're going to send in the house bot. We're going to send in Brett here. Let's see if we can fix this uh, <laughs> this robot. Oh, no! Chris, it's alive! <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> wow! Oh, now, the weapon wow. on Dr. Frankenstein is down, and Vacuum is just going to work. I love the wheel guards are now in a uh, Bumblebee configuration. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, <laughs> The full-on flight configuration. Whoa. Huge gash there in the floor. You just now you can see exactly how powerful some of these weapons are, and how they're just so easily able to cut through, you know, uh, that, that cabinet-grade plywood that we have there as the floors for uh, NHRL. All right, and it looks like the weapon on vacuum is back. I can't believe it, Chris. Now with 90 seconds left, they're going to see if they can rack up more damage points here. They've killed the weapon of Dr. Frankenpine, but they haven't killed the drive yet. Dr. Frankenpine is still showing great mobility. And that big, chunky wedge on the front of Dr. Frankenpine is not friendly to vacuum, <laughs> which again goes ping-ponging across the box. Is vacuum dead? What is happening? Up, oh, up. Uh. Oh, you can hear that. You can hear the the uh, the song going inside of the box. I think that vacuum got turned off and turned back I, on. I mean, that can happen. Wow. Amazing. 50 seconds left here. The weapons on both of these robots are down. They are looking sad, Chris. <laughs> I've never seen see-through wheel guards before, have you? And I think it might actually be a Alexan polycarbonate strip. Yeah. If it works for the box, it can work for your bot. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like the, the left side of the drive of Dr. Frankenpine might be locked up a little bit. It's having trouble exiting the pink square. It might be high centered on one side. Seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. That's the match. Drive to the door. This one will go to the judges. Wow, I really like Vacuum. That is a very cool robot. A round of applause from the audience. They love that match. There were some uh, great exchanges in the beginning of that match. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that we get to see a second of replays here. All right. And this is uh, firing up uh, right, out of, right out of the gate, uh, doing a little ping pong action off the sides there. Uh, and there we see one of those wheel guards finally getting uh, freed up there. Now, oh. Vacuum is, uh, is run by <laughs> Lucas Shoe Hill from Woburn, Massachusetts. Uh, Lucas works as an engineer, and um, he is a first time competitor. Now, Dr. Frankenpine, run by University of Maryland, their college team, uh, captained by Brandon Bennett Young. And uh, we are going to go to the judges here as they deliberate. Um, uh, how, did, how did you think that match went? I mean, Vacuum was alive for most of that match. Huge amount of damage, knocked out the weapon almost immediately. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, both bots, um, 
you know, they were able to have that weapon kind of fired up in the uh, in the beginning, but you know, it, it ended up coming down to a little of that push and pull at the end. I'd say, uh, you know, uh, uh, the damage points are probably going to go. Um, uh, w what would you say to vacuum? To vacuum. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, it's really it really comes down to uh, the control and aggression as well. And uh, but I'm I'm pretty sure we're gonna we're gonna see this work out in uh, in vacuum's favor. Okay. All right. Now I see that they already loaded into cage two. So judges, if you can, enter your scores faster. <laughs> you know, they're ready to go. I can see Weta X from Santana Starks eight, and Rexfest. Are we starting eight, this match? Seven, Looks like it. We'll come six, back to that judge's decision five, after this match. Okay. Four, three, Rexfest run by two, Robert Rund. One. Fight. Romance fight. Incredible. Huge pop in the air for Weta X on Rexfest. Rexfest is actually staying pretty, pretty planted to the floor here, Chris. One of Robert's secret weapons is his drive quality. This is an RC car racer who is building a combat robot with these very long forks trying to get under Santana Starks and Weta X. And look at that. I think the weapon on Weta X is oh, down. Oh, boy. Oh, we have a pin. That is a good pin from Weta X on Wreckfest. Breakfast looks like it could be stuck up, up against the rail. Will Brett come in and save that robot? Let's go, Robert. All right, it looks like the forks on Breakfast are getting stuck in the floor. And there's another pin from Santana Starks. Robert here has to just wait, try and push, it, push his way out of this, uh, this pin. Those forks are getting stuck. Yeah. Time and time again, Robert is now up against the rail. Santana is is celebrating there. 90 seconds left. I can see Robert shaking his head. I think that he's stuck. Here comes the count out. All right, that's a knockout. Ah, it's Round a tough of spot. applause for yeah. Robert Runt. First, uh, first combat robot match here at Norwalk Havoc. Tap out. All right, we're going to go back to Lindsay with the judge's decision for that last match. Lindsay, who won that one? All right, the winner by judge's decision is Vacuum 13. Okay, Vacuum. Yeah. No surprise there. Dominant performance from Vacuum. And uh, Dr. Frankenpine. Gets, uh, gets kicked down into the elimination bracket. Uh, Lindsay, back to you. I hear that we have another super chat. My God, people are sending us super chats left and right. I yeah. love it. And keep them coming. Keep them coming. All right, so this one is from Team Testbot, who I have a sneaking suspicion is Charles Guan. Uh, and he has to say, overhaul for Senate 2022. And what I say <laughs> to that is, why stop at Senate? Go right to the president. There you go. Yeah. Charles Guan for president. What, what do you think about that, Chris? We could uh, have cat ears in yeah, the, uh, the White House Yeah, that's the again. first mandate, right? The first time since the 1800s. Everyone gets a van, everyone gets cat ears. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> We're just going to divert the military spending straight into van trucks. Here we go. <laughs> that's going to be a new era. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Look, loading in is Ethan Shipley in Hot Poke. Yeah. All right. See that pink robot there? Mm-hmm. It's named Hot Poke for a reason, Chris. <laughs> oh, I know. Chris, uh, tell, tell, tell oh, us the, I'll the tell history. The, I can tell the, the tale of Hot Poke. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It was Norwalk Havoc 2021 sometime earlier in the season. And, maybe uh, May, my, June. Yeah, maybe May, yeah. maybe June. The Well, the echoes of that uh, scenario still echo throughout, you know, today. But um, someone... Uh, you know, took it upon themselves to get all of us uh, some delicious poke delivered, uh, including uh, to you, Luke, uh, yeah. who uh, received a, for some reason, a hot order of poke, which when consuming a large bowl of raw fish, you probably don't want it to be room temperature. Um, <laughs> or if you do, if you want to eat hot poke, don't. <laughs> Don't eat it in the middle of a live stream, Chris. Don't, don't eat it in the middle of a 14-hour broadcast day. Yes, that is uh, that is true. I immediately started sweating. 
I couldn't stop. And I was like, I might be throwing up live on the air, okay? <laughs> All right, uh, let's, go, let's go over to Katie. Please save us from this, uh, this horrific <laughs> anecdote. Well, here, we were talking about Nitro Hornet, and uh, as they're kind of gearing up in the other cage, I was asking, uh, I wish I wish we get a real close look at this. There's a lot of duct tape on this thing, and I was asking if there was any fixes to it, and not really since the last competition, but in fact, he's hoping that there's enough damage to it to retire it. So that's the goal. Get the damage, retire the, retire the bot. What do you think? Wow, Nitro Hornet retiring. Nitro Hornet's one of the original OG robots yeah. that was fighting here back at 50 Day Street. If it was a permanent retirement, I think I'd be kind of sad about that. It's actually my retirement strategy. Just keep going until, uh, you until know. Until they start duct taping, taping you up. <laughs> Once Is that I right? start having duct, duct tape all over me, you know. It's <laughs> yes, time. Right. Plug me into a beach somewhere. All oh. right, on over to cage three. It looks like they're uh, they're all set Eight, and geared up, ready seven, to go. Six, five, Hot poke there four, in the uh, the pink corner, three, chubby unicorn over two, there in the blue corner. One, fight, robots fight. Ooh, good pin from Hot Poke. Ooh. This is just something that you have to be here and see uh, in person to really oh! feel the weapon spin up. Oh no, and oh, that no. plastic plow from Hot Poke is gone. One of the eyes is gone. Oh no, Chubby Hot... Unicorn! Oh, oh no! no! Oh! 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 Hot Poke is just sprayed all across the box. Hot Poke is in two different counties, Chris. Uh, wow. Really living up to the name. Wow, a chubby unicorn has high centered itself. But that Knock won't out. matter. Hot Poke Knock is out. going into Knock the uh, elimination bracket. Knockout. Wow. Wow. Uh, I got to see a couple of these hits again. Chris, uh, let's talk quickly about why you don't uh, put a plastic plow on the front of your robot. <laughs> it shatters <laughs> like that. That's why. <laughs> My goodness! Ah, uh, it's 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 always fun to see the inside of the bot on the outside of the bot. That looks like a weaponized like Barbie dream car, you know? Mm -hmm. I love pink. I think we should have a lot more pink robots. I think they look great on the stream. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge fan of Ethan Shipley Eight, and Hot Poke. Looking seven, forward to seeing him later today. Six, All right, five, we're over in box four, two. It looks like we're ready three, to go again. Two, Nitro one, Hornet versus Ty. Fight, robots fight. <laughs> Now that is the Nitro Hornet that we want to see crossing the box as a box rush is taking straight to Ty. Ty is this uh, Tombstone-esque titanium uh, robot built by Dylan Juarez from Texas who competed on BattleBot with War EZ. It is super low profile um, and it's got a great reach advantage way out in front of those uh, two wheels and it's got seats all the way in the back. So it's, it's offensive, it's defensive, it's just a really well-built bot. Yeah. What you need to be to go up against, you know, a lot of the drums and feeder bars that you see in this weight class. Looks like the bar on Nitro Hornet is down. Ty continues to run. Kind of concerningly, Chris, it sounds a little bit like a uh, gas, like a lawnmower in there. It's true, yeah. It is a, it is a weed whacker, uh, but probably much, much more dangerous. Yeah. Nitro Hornet's weapon is down. Its left side of its drive is impaired. Dylan Juarez is going in and trying to finish off this robot with one minute and 45 seconds left to go. Sound is from yeah, this. it's it's gnarly. When you're here live and in person, like you just feel it. Uh, you know, it's, it comes right through the floor. Yeah, it's this rattling kind of clattering sound. Oh, with the weapon on tie. Oh, it's coming back. It sounds like a weed whacker in like uh, the middle of a suburban afternoon, Chris. Right. <laughs> Got about 70 seconds left here on the clock. Don't know if Nitro Hornet's going to be able to uh, kind of resurrect this uh, this match for themselves. Yeah, I guess this gets down to the definition of translational movement. Tap Here we out. go. Tap out from Dylan McCarthy and Nitro Hornet. Your winner is Ty. Let's go immediately here to a replay of this match. 
And that was that first exchange uh, that um, kind of decommissioned that, uh, that, that, that drum. Uh, and, you know, Ty was able to kind of capitalize on the rest of the fight uh, using that, you know, that really long reach advantage and uh, that incredibly powerful horizontal spinner. Chris, we've seen now multiple Weta drums go down in this competition, which I feel is unusual. Weta drums are usually pretty tough. And, um, and these, these hub motor designs I absolutely love. And I don't know why we're seeing such reliability issues uh, with this weapon type. Um, as, we are, as we're loading it out here uh, from the box. We'll just chalk it up to it's the first event of the season. Yeah. You know, a lot, of, a lot of builders, this is like the first time that they can even really safely test these bots. And they're yeah. here and they're, uh, they come the night before. We have, um, we have the entire builder production area like all set up, ready to go. And teams can kind of come in, they bring their gear in, they load everything in. They, uh, you know, they, they have a test box here at their disposal to, uh, to fire up some of these very dangerous weapons. Yeah, between um, like November, which was for a lot of people their last competition of the year because they didn't qualify for December, and March, you know, like that is several months for them to change motors, to change kind of ESC systems, to upgrade their robots, and we're seeing some gremlins getting worked yeah, out definitely. in the first round. All right, uh, over to Cage 3. It looks like it's Apex versus Razor Storm. They're loaded into the box. Oh, I cannot wait to see the new and improved Razor Storm. This is one of my Eight, favorite robots seven, because it has two six, weapon types. Five. It four, has a lifter and three, a spinner. Two. One. Five. Robots five. Oh, here we go. Right out of the box. Oh, I see a wheel already. Apex run by the bad crew. Uh, it is this orange and blue fingertech beater bar. It well, looks like uh, it's made out of Duplo blocks, right? Oh, I love the color scheme, Chris. And Razor Storm, it is this black robot with the white lifting arm. But this is an absolute slugfest. Apex is bringing it straight to Razor Storm, shoving that robot around. I can hear Ooh. tap out. <laughs> that might have been just in time. Wow. Amazing. Tap out. Tap out. Fast match for Apex. Now, one of, the, one of the really cool things about the Apex story is that this is a high school or maybe middle school combat robotics team. And uh, they bring these Fingertech beater bar kits to the competition. And you're seeing these huge leaps forward in their drive quality, their build quality. Um, in just the last six months, this team has had an incredible glow up. This was a dominant win by Apex. I cannot wait to see them um, competing again later today. Great shot here of the audience. Oh, wow, we have so many kids wow. in the audience today. We're really today. filling up for even a, a long day. We got this many people here already. Let's, uh, let's see some hands out there. All right, let's get the wave going. Look at this crowd. Right. I tell you, the crowd just gets more and more beautiful every single time. All right, we're going to check in here with Katie Osborne. <laughs> it is a beautiful crowd indeed. Thanks all of you guys for joining us today. Another person who's joined us is Jack Move, and Andrew is his name. He and his son Julian were here in December with us. Uh, Jack Move is one of those bots that he said he's just trying to get a little bit more experience under his belt. But this time around, Julian's joining with his mini, mini bot Bug to kind of help his dad out. So this is a tag team here looking for that experience like Chris, you, and Luke were talking about. Sometimes it's just about a little experience. I love the Davis family. Uh, they are here at basically every single competition. And Jack Move is one of Drew's favorite robots. Uh, I cannot wait to see this performance Eight, here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Very long shorts on the front of Jack Move, which have successfully got under Ratfish, popping it in the air. Drew Davis going to work with this vertical spinner. Wow. Pushing oh. Ratfish into the corner. Ratfish has yet to, to leave its square. Oh, boy. The drive on Ratfish could be dead. Oh. Punish me if an unstick is going to help here. Tap out. Ah, and there's the tap out. Tap out. 
You can see that look of concern on the face of Mark Harris in there, who was really hoping that uh, his match with Jack Move was going to go longer than 10 seconds. Jack Move repeatedly hitting Mark's robot, Ratfish, in the air and leaving it to die. It's an interesting uh, looking bot, though, that he's got there. It's a, it's a, it's a cool front pan, um, but you know, he wasn't able to use that defensive configuration uh, to his advantage, and instead, uh, you know, they, they got a pretty big hit under the underside, and it looked like maybe that's what kind of disabled the bot. All right, we're going to go to Katie Osborne, who's here with Drew Davis and his son. That's exactly right. And Jab in fact, out. that was maybe one of the shortest uh, matches that we've had so far today. First and foremost, you guys are sharing the story together. How special is it to be able to be here with the kids? It's fun. Um, he's always wanted a mini bot, and he's asked for one. I'm like, no, I'm busy with my bots. But I finally uh, got around to making him one. Jab and, out. Uh, my wife designed his sticker, and he, he loves it. So he's a little nervous, right? You're a little nervous? But <laughs> we won, which is good. Uh, but more importantly, he got a little experience. So it was fun sharing the, the cage with my, my boy. My older boy is fighting later, so he's going to be driving the other mini bot with him. So we're really excited. All right, Julian, your first experience. I know you said I was a little bit nervous, but we're all a little bit nervous here today. How much fun was it getting out there? Really fun. Louder, a little louder. Really fun. <laughs> Boom. That's all it is. Really fun. Oh Thank you, guys. Good, best of luck out there today. Oh, I love the Davis family. Yeah. Great my bot God, builders. I hope they go uh, deep today. Greater people. Yeah. 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 All right. We're going to go over to Lindsay, who's got a super chat for us. Actually, we've got two. One's oh, a little boy. weird. Just going to say that uh, ahead of time. It's from Flurb McGurb. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you read it on your own. Oh, it's a boy. series of bungers. So oh, this I is don't like know Buffalo. what that means, but maybe you do. Right. It's similar yeah. to Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Bunger. Or bunger? Bunger, bunger, bunger. Bunger, bunger. Bunger. Yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. So Thanks I think the answer to the question is bunger. I hope that yes. that is not uh, a word that means something absolutely awful somewhere else in the world. Fleur, uh, Fleur we're, we're nearly 40. We, we don't know all of the new words, okay? So I really hope we don't get demonetized here today. I just <laughs> learned what yeet means. So anyway, we have right. a second one. Uh, if you like feeling a spinner through the floor, I'll make sure to put a lot of power in a 30-pounder with two weapons for you, two. And Luke, I'll let you test it in the test box with me. Oh and that God. is from Dual Force Robotics Twinser. So, wow, cool. Sounded like a veiled threat, but yeah. I'm going to take it I think, in uh, I you know, think he a wants positive. us in the box with the, we with yeah. the weapon going? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm Twinser, down. thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, thanks so much for those super chats. Keep them coming. Uh, love the engagement there on um, YouTube Live. And um, yeah, I hope that uh, I hope that it's a really fun chat. I mean, every single time I pop in there, it seems like a very supportive and wholesome place. So uh, yeah, let's let's keep it going. So the next best thing that you could do to preparing and like and bringing a bot here and competing is watching because you're learning exactly what it takes uh, to uh, to overcome some of these uh, the challenges of of some of the other bot designs and you know that that this is the best type of homework that you can do uh, until it's time to actually get your bot ready and get down here. Yeah. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, tell your friends about it, because we're going to be going all day long. All right, we're, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break here to thank our sponsors.
All right, we want to thank Senkat Sen for sponsoring Norwalk Havoc. Uh, Senkat Sen is an online laser and CNC cutting service, the preferred service for many of our builders for their custom robotics parts and supplies. Norwalk Havoc fans and builders can get 10% off their next purchase with code build 4 norwalk 10 It's uh, numeral 4 and numeral 10. So thank you so much, Senkat Sen. All right, we're going to get right back into the fighting action here with Cage 2, which is all loaded up and ready to go. Looks like we've got ZZBot versus Kalma. ZZBot run by one of my favorite drivers, Steve Campbell from Dedham, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. He is an absolute grind. Uh, like he, he grinds here at this competition. I've seen him uh, six times probably in the last year um, and he's getting better and better every single time against Eight, Kalma. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. You see the mini bot from ZZ Bot absolutely crossing the box, taking it straight to Kalma. ZZ is not firing up his weapon at the moment. We'll find out momentarily if that is intentional. You can see that ZZ Bot uh, really kind of steered its, its, the back of the robot into its opponent. There goes ah, that there weapon we on go. ZZ Bot. Oh! A little tombstone style spin around. Both of these weapons are fully operational. The uh, but their drives? That's questionable. It's just uh, struggling there in the corner. Oh, and we've shattered a camera. It's the first camera of the day. The camera from Kalma, Kalma has just ripped that camera straight off. Oh, oh no. no! Those are $600 each! <laughs> All right. Oh, and Kalma's oh, just wow. landed another really good hit on the back of ZZ Bot. ZZ Bot's drive looks a little strange there. More likely to hit the uh, the side of the box than their opponent. We go through more adventure camps here at uh, Norwalk than an illegal parachuting operation. <laughs> good, Chris. Good. Now you can see a little bit of black uh, foam getting sprayed around inside of the box. I think that could be the wheels from Homa. You can see that left wheel of yeah. Homa starting to get stripped away. I think part of one of the wheels on CZ Bot might also be a little uh, ripped up, as you can see right there. It's its left wheel. These are huge hits on these robots. The right side of CZ Bot's uh, weapon guard, I'm sorry, the steel guard is gone. Ooh, oh, right. and there's the oh, belt there's on the CZ belt. Bot's. That weapon is not coming back. Kalma has 50 seconds here in hopes of racking up damage points, control points, and aggression points. That I know. left side of their drive is completely locked up. This has been a total slugfest, Chris. I love it. I don't know what we're seeing here from uh, control and aggression, but probably going to come down to a damage decision for the judges if it goes for the next 23 seconds. Yeah, Kalma here has just been stuck twisting. Is this controlled motion, Chris? All right, we're going into the final countdown. This one will go to the judges. Three, two, one, that's the match. Turn off your weapon, Kalma, and crab walk to the door. All right, we got a replay coming up. This was an incredibly destructive this is, match. I think this is where the, oh! oh. Wow. Oh, I felt that. Yeah, we should we should be watching this in like 3D. Like we need a VR headset or something, Chris. Wow, our first broken camera of the day. I wonder if it'll be our last. Probably not. So early in the day, too. Going bouncing straight into that corner. Incredible. On the back half of this match, though, we saw some impaired driving, and uh, and the the weapon on ZZBot go down. I wonder if that's going to be enough to secure a win for Kalma. And we see Steve Campbell there uh, making ZZBot safe. And his friend in the Guinness t-shirt turning off the mini-bot. 
see that little Leatherman tool. It turns mm -hmm. on and off the robots. So Steve is a, a retired electrical engineer, so I'm sure that uh, this is uh, this is nothing new to him. Um, and of course, uh, he's uh, also uh, he plays the bass in in a folk rock band. Yeah, yeah. I really love Steve Campbell, um, and he has brought so many different types of robots to this competition. He really likes ZZBot because he's had great success with this robot. I think that he is going to win a couple more matches here today. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see here with the judges whether he's going to be advancing in the uh, undefeated bracket or going down into the, uh, it's not the loser's bracket, Chris. What's it called again? Uh, the elimination bracket? The elimination. The elimination bracket. Good. <laughs> All right, Chris, let's check in with your fiance. Lindsay, I, I hear you have the judge's decision waiting for us. Yes, uh, unanimous decision for Kalma. Okay, Kalma advances. Well done. Okay. All right, I can see that we're loading into cage three. Tiger Claw versus Katrina. Tiger Claw is a brand new robot from, uh, from Chris Caps. But uh, first, we're going to go to Katie. Katie, uh, what's going on? Yeah, you're talking about that brand new bot here with Chris. He actually has his brother, Matt, next to him, a 13-year-old as well. He said that he actually put $700 into this bot recently. It's a brand new design that he's been building since October. Um, and he got a lot of help from Team Shredded. As you can see, they had a little bit of uh, issues with the cage and getting those bots out of the corner there to get this thing started. But it looks like match number three is about to be underway. Okay. Chris Caps running Tiger Claw, brand new design. Chris had competed last year and decided to come back and build a, uh, a really powerful egg beater spinner uh, versus Katrina, which uh, I hear is a hurricane, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's been around for a while. Small three pound hurricane in there. <laughs> Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, I see. There we go. It's a big it's tooth. A hurricane, it Chris. really is. It's got a big nasty tooth oh, on the outside of that thing. It. Wow. I love a full body spinner. Yeah. Look at this melty brain here. Yeah, it's a it's it's a very different one also. Look at the size of the tooth on that uh on that that big horizontal band around the outside. It looks like one of these early exchanges has damaged the drive on Tiger Claw. Oh, another huge hit! A perfect hit on Katrina. And is Katrina Tap dead? Oh, it is. It is. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, tap, right. out. tap out! Tap, tap out! Tap it's out. a tap out! Oh my god! Chris! Tiger Claw just <laughs> is, is really pouncing. Yeah, once it gets the taste for blood, it just can't stop. <laughs> wow, this was one of my favorite matches so far this morning. Look at this. Yeah, that was an incredible Tap opening out. exchange there. It's like a shuffle puck just going all over this box. Wow. One it's, of the big things that you're looking for with a Fingertech beater bar is its ability to really take hits uh, weapon on weapon. Yep. And we saw that weapon running the entire time and even a little past <laughs> where it should have been. So, uh, so yeah, Tiger Claw, fantastic, fantastic robot. And Katrina, how cool is that really robot? Really unique build, you know, that, that ring almost acts as a, a defensive mechanism when yeah. it's not spitting. So yeah. it's like you have this... Uh, you have this heavy metal uh, you know, ring around the outside that's kind of acting as a, a way to protect your internals, but when it gets up to full speed, that weight is distributed evenly and you don't want to be on the business end of that tooth. I love full body spinners. I love melty brains because they're so cinematic. When they, when they just start flying around inside of the box, oh, it's incredible. I love it, yeah. I love it. Firebots, full body spinners, yeah. you know, that's a, it's a great way to, to get some eyeballs, uh, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, on your team and uh, and and to get some uh, some fan support there. There goes Chris Caps walking off with his brother, victorious. You gotta love that. All right, we're gonna check in with Lindsay, who has yet another super chat for us. Lindsay, they keep coming. This one is from Mutually Assured Destruction, who I believe is Nate Franklin, mm. uh, a, a Beetle Way, uh, uh, you know, champion in his own right, uh, and he has to say Wedge. He Edge. loves to fight with wedges, and uh, I think he wants to see them here at Norwalk. So 
Well, Nate, I hope that you were uh, tuning in earlier because we had Denightmare from Dominic Yankaskis. If you haven't seen that yet, stay tuned here on the stream. You're going to see it. Denightmare, incredible robot, mostly wedge, tiny little weapon. Uh, yeah, Denightmare. Uh, if you also want to see Denightmare, I suggest eating something really spicy before going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, uh, Nate Franklin, one, one of the best drivers here on the East Coast, has been competing all over the place, competed at Motorama, mm -hmm. and uh, we have yet to see him here at Norwalk Havoc because he refuses to build a robot that has a, a weapon on it. So maybe we can have a close reading and uh, get him maybe a lifter that's mostly a D2 kit or something like that. Well, I mean, we do have the sportsman's class here, so, you that's know. That's true. Uh, if, you, uh, if you are interested in building a sumo bot, um, you know, just something that is uh, really durable and uh, does not necessarily need a super high energy weapon on there. Well, there is there is a there is a tournament here for you. Yeah, Nate, build a 12 pounder if you really want to. Build a 12 pound wedge. Come here and win 12 pound sportsman. There's no cash for a 12 pound sportsman. Is there a trophy? There's not even a trophy. I think you get a little handshake from Austin McCord. That's it's like the Paul Hollywood of handshakes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, uh, let's check in with well, Katie. I'm here with Theo from PGF, and there's a bit of a story to the PGF. First and, first and foremost, uh, what does PGF stand for? So PGF right now stands for possibly going to fail. Uh, we project so much confidence, guys. It's, it's crazy. Um, we've won one fight. We're one in seven, and we hold the record for the fastest tap out in the history of Norwalk Havoc at four seconds. So come at us. Um, we also... <laughs> <laughs> past safety with two minutes left to go in this event. So um, when we go in there, expect sparks. Possibly. I have no follow-up. That's, that's Theo for you. Good luck. Go get him out there. Expect those sparks. Oh, my gosh. I nah. love Theo. I love the charisma. Theo actually runs a very popular YouTube channel. When I was doing my research on the builders uh, the, you know, last week, Theo runs a fantastic uh, uh, channel. He's also interested in stand-up comedy. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see that charisma on display. Great yeah. job, Theo. Yeah, he Eight, boats. Seven, six, five, four, three. Right, we're starting two, off here. We got e uh, one, ER Stingray five, in the uh, blue corner, fight. Lux uh, Ray Mega X in the, uh, in the pink corner. Lux Ray Mega X has, uh, oh, it looks like they may be restarting this match. Lux Ray Mega X run by Robert <laughs> Treschler. And uh, eight. There seven, we go. There's the six, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Ooh, look at that hurt. Oh, that's a big boy. Oh, Lux Ray Mega X is uh, just went straight weapon on weapon with ER Stingray. Oh, oh, huge hit on the back of ER Stingray. Listen to that thing. It's like a bandsaw. Probably looks, more destructive. It looks like the weapon on ER Stingray is down. But yeah, you can hear that bandsaw action from Luxray Mega X. This is a father and son team. Oh, oh. huge shower of sparks. Oh! Luxray Mega X has successfully pushed ER Stingray into the corner. ER Stingray is just twisting. With no weapon, here it really is going to come down to whether Luxray Mega X can stay alive for another two minutes. Ooh, another good shower of sparks from Robert Dreschler. And it looks like the battery's gone! Oh no! Oh, that you need weapon. that. That that robot is dead. <laughs> it's very important that the battery uh, remain attached to your motors at all times. Wow! Gonna need to get Bert to push you to the door there. The Dreschlers are victorious with Luxray Mega X. Tap out. And that is the tap out. Um, but let's take a look at this replay. Ooh. That was uh, that initial uh, impact that sent that multi-bot to the corner where it, uh, where it took a nap. Wow. 
Luxray Mega X, classic design, four wheels and a vertical spinner, big old tall vertical spinner yeah. too, really able to get under the blade of ER Stingray and pop that robot in the air. Oh, and there you go, severing the battery. Incredible. Eight, seven, six. Oh, and we're ready five, to go over here in four, cage three. three. We have PGF Two, that uh, one, probably going five. to fail. Robots versus fight. one out of seven ain't bad. <laughs> versus Remy de Guzman, pain train team member Remy de Guzman and the Wicked Wedge. Oh, <laughs> Wicked Wedge is an absolutely punishing lifter. The whole giraffe's face lifts, Chris, and the uh, you can see the the. The, I, the weapon on PGF is dead. It looks oh, like, yeah, I guess we, you know. Drive when, is impaired as well. The weapon on PGF being dead, uh, Wicked Wedge really doesn't have to stick its neck out there. <laughs> it's a giraffe pun, Chris. I love it. All right. Theo taps out. PGF is, uh, well, it just... It just F, Chris. <laughs> All right. False flag. <laughs> All right, let's go into a replay here of this match. The big thing that you're always looking for with Remy de Guzman and uh, his zombie uh, mechanized giraffe here is drive. And he's got these huge wheels. He's so fast inside of the box. And uh, he was able to break PGF's weapon with that huge, huge wedge. It's a wicked wedge there, Chris. Oh, there goes Theo. Uh, clever. He just he called that a false flag uh, fail. Um, obviously, they have plans to dominate the uh, elimination bracket and make their way back up into the uh, the finals tonight. Um, very clever. Yeah. Very clever uh, uh, strategy there. You can see a good shot here of Remy turning off his robot. Remy de Guzman is a Pain Train uh, team member, and uh, he's going to be competing uh, with Pain Train in season seven, Chris. Any other uh, members of Team Pain Train off the top of your head? Uh, I mean, I can name all of them if you'd like, Chris. Oh, really? Yeah. OK, let's see it. Uh, let's see. Captain Evan Arias. Uh, really, what I care about Captain. is do they have a new social media coordinator, Luke? I mean, he's terrible, yes. But it's me. I'm, oh. uh, I'm joining Pain Train this season. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. If I get to watch you walk out of that tunnel, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to be the second person with shorts on BattleBots. All right. right. Seth Schaefer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I can see us loading into uh, to Cage 2, but first we're going to check in with Katie and Theo. Yeah, no, Theo and, and the fact I'm William here, and in fact... This is what you wanted. You wanted a follow-up interview. Right, and so we not only wanted that, but we wanted to lose to give everybody a false sense of security. The storm is coming. Look, so this is, there's no damage, right? We sustained no damage, and because of that, when we come back, uh, stuff is going to die. I would say expect the sparks. William, anything? So Sparks, I just coming. hope my mini bot works. <laughs> I, I need I need better about to work. We also have um, a replica of Brett the Brick that was supposed to compete, but um, it failed, and uh, that's coming soon in the elimination bracket. So um, just keep an eye out for it. And also, um, we're running the table now. So um, what is, okay, what's our Martin final Mason record? Yeah, uh, guys, I, here's here's the thing. I think I think this is strategy. There's a little bit of strategy involved with what Thea is doing. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, uh, fail to like kind of kind of draw them in, you know. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Crazy like a fox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Theo's a builder to watch today for sure. All right, uh, we're loaded here into cage two. Oh, we're loaded into cage two and three. Which one are we gonna go to first? Eight, seven, six. Looks like it's gonna be five, Saber versus Pine Victus. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. What? Oh, did I see a drone? There's a drone inside of there. What? Now don't, don't hit the drone. It is at this point just a uh, a piece of debris that could get sucked into a weapon belt. Clever. Saber run by Nick Grumsky from Worcester, Massachusetts. This is a robotics oh, engineering oh, and computer science student at WBI. Oh, it's so little. And there's that tiny little drone. That's an expensive drone. Don't hit that drone. 
That's what we used for the opening shot of Norwalk today. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pine Victor. Oh no, there goes that wheel guard. Oh, and there's a wheel! Oh no, yeah, and there's the tap out. All right, that was a win for our Team WPI and Sabre, and Pine Victus is going to get kicked down into the... See if we can get a replay of that early aerial attack. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Bouncing head over head, uh, head, head over heels there. And Sabre successfully getting under its opponent. Ripping off that wheel guard. Oh, and popping off the wheel. There we go. Big win That for should Sabre. snap back on. College team versus college team. You love to see it, Chris. It's the best. Yeah. It's best. They're, they're so passionate about, you know, uh, their team and, and, you know, promoting their schools and stuff. So I, I love to see it. All right. We're going to head over to Cage 3. We've got the Immortal Crixis from Santana Starks and Spartan X from Johnny Sumpas. Johnny Sumpas flies in from the Bahamas to go to this competition. Uh, Eight, yeah, he's, seven, uh, he's, he's six, known in my eyes as five, Johnny Five. Four, three, the best of the best two, of the best. One. Fight, robots, fight. Whoa! Oh, huge hit there on the Immortal Crixus. And Johnny Supas has successfully pushed Santana up against the rail. Oh. Coming in to finish the job. Not content to allow the saving throw of Brett. Oh. This match ain't over. Oh. oh, no! Oh! And Spartan X is in the corner. All right, here comes Brett. A nice gentle tap, Brett. Oh, no! Oh. Oh, God. Brett! <laughs> Brett doesn't have a gentle mode. All right, let's see if Johnny Simpas can get <laughs> this robot running again. Oh, this would be a huge turn of events. Okay. <laughs> there we oh, go. Oh, here we go. We're back into it. It looks like those forks may have been stuck under the rail. Oh, and Johnny Simpas is bringing it straight to Santana. Look at that. Incredible, good pop from Santana Stars on Spartan X. Santana would love to push uh, Johnny here into the corner. Oh, and he may have done it once again. Here we go. 90 seconds left in this match. And it looks like the oh. drive and the weapon on Spartan X is down. Santana Starks is celebrating. Wow, dominant performance for Santana and the Immortal Crixus. Will Johnny tap out? He's being counted out. Johnny doesn't know surrender. There we go, and that is a knockout. Wow. Santana starts just like blistering knockout. pace through the uh, the winner's bracket here. And, uh, and really Santana showing off why he's one of the very best drivers in the Midwest. He would like to come here and ink that title for himself at Norwalk Havoc. All right, we're gonna go into a replay here. Let's take a look at Santana Starks and the Immortal Crixus. Chris, do you want to hear a fun fact about the Immortal Crixus? Always. Okay. Santana named this after his dog, Crixus. And Crixus is 287 years old. <laughs> <laughs> really, what, what, what you're looking for is this, this punishing, suffocating drive style from Santana Starks, and that was really the, uh, the defining factor in that win for him. All right, I see that we're loading into cage two. Seth Schaefer in division, a new and improved division versus Professor Hex. This is undefeated uh, bracket round two. The first time we're seeing both of these robots here today. Eight, seven. And we're off. 
good hit immediately from Division on Professor Hex. Oh, uh, looks like that no. wheel is a little askew. It is askew, oh, and that wheel is gone. gone. It is gone. Wow, incredible reliability from Division. And that may be it. Ah, oh, with a little wobble. Professor Hex could be dead. Professor Hex thinking about dropping out. Oh, instead it's a knockout. Whoa, good knockout. win for Seth. Yeah. Okay. Seth Schaefer, Division, incredible bot. Um, also, Seth uh, is, a, is a great content creator on YouTube. You should check out his channel, Just Cause Robotics. Gives you uh, all the fundamental knowledge that you need to get involved in the sport. Seth, also a good human being. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I got to pit for Seth at Motorama a couple of years ago, and Seth helped you out with your combat robot, Chris. Yeah, he sure did. He uh, rolled up his uh, sleeves and his shorts, and you know he dove right in and helped us get Darkseid ready for the, uh, what was it, the November event back last year. The, um, yeah, and, oh wow. Okay, here we go. We're loading into Cage 2. See Izzy Cow there. And um, it's a very interesting wheel guard on there. I actually think that those are titanium. That is uh, a titanium cleats. tooth. It's like a, a lynx, a lynx wheel. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. We're going to be seeing actually a fair number of titanium cleated wheels today. I saw them back in the pits. And this is designed to get better engagement with the wood floor here. Uh, wow, and that is a very wide boy robot that it's facing. Oh, that is different. Oh, I love, I'm, I'm excited. All right, this is Alex Pezza running Be Careful What You Wish For, this very wide Be Careful What You Wish For, versus Izzy Cow and Electric Sheep. Izzy Cow is a BattleBots competitor. She was most recently uh, on BattleBots with Overhaul. She is ready to go here running electric sheep, and uh, this is this is a very different Be Careful What You Wish For. I feel like last year when we saw Be Careful Eight, What You Wish For, it was uh, seven, six, five, four, like a, a big pile three, of parts, but, two, um, one, but this is really, fight. really something else. Robots fight. The thing I'm looking for here is uh, the traction that Electric Sheep is able to get with those, those pleated wheels. Alex Pezza is doing a great job with these wide wings on the Yeah, that you this wish is for. a very interesting take on a control bot. Um, one that also has a, you know, it looks like a pretty substantial weapon. That's like a small uh, egg beater in, in the front there. Yeah. This looks like something Batman would fly around in. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's a full-size Fingertech beater bar. I wonder if he cut this himself. It's a very oh. interesting robot. Just shower of uh, sawdust right up into the camera. And he's pushed Izzy into the corner, and I see a weapon belt from Izzy's robot. Electric Sheep's weapon is down. And it's now stuck on its head. Tap out. Uh, and there's the tap out. We got a quick tap out for Izzy Cow and Electric Sheep. Alex, it will be advancing in the undefeated bracket. Now, Chris, uh, I would love to figure out where Alex got this hoodie, because uh, I, I want to wear one of these myself on the stream one day. <laughs> you love dinosaurs in the 90s. Um, yeah, quick replay here of this match. Really, be careful what you wish for was in, is, is, was in charge of the pacing of this match from second one. Pushing Izzy into the corner, at one point even wedging Izzy next to the house spot. You can see the victorious face of Alex! There we go! Pain Train team member Alex Peza celebrating their good win for Be Careful What You Wish For. Two BattleBots builders. Izzy cow has been in the sport for a very long time. She's a fantastic builder. And... Um, Alex, relatively new to this sport, he works as a, as a sous chef, and uh, he had built multiple combat robots during uh, the pandemic, finally brought them here, and had great success in 2021. Hmm. All right, it looks like we're loading into cage two. I can see Hurt Caboose versus Narcissist. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Hurt Caboose is run by Pain Train team member Angel Vidal. And uh, this is a just gorgeous interpretation of uh, the finger tech beater bar. First, we're going to check in here with Katie before this match. Katie. Yeah, yo, yo, yo. yeah I'm, I'm actually standing here with Jameson Go, and we're discussing the fact that he wants to watch this particular fight. So before they get started, Jameson, good to have you back. Silence Spring, we know, is, is going to be up for battle here today. What are some of your expectations for yourself and for the bot? Well, the expectations are pretty high. People know the name Silent Spring. But what we're trying to do is to improve over the performance in December, which we saw a, a pretty repeatable to failure mode. So we'll see if the upgrades uh, pay off this time. And what uh, is it about watching some of these battles here before you go out there? Are you hoping to learn? Well, first, got to know who we're going to fight. Silent Spring has a bye in the first round. So the winner of this fight will fight me next. So in that case, I think that's why he keeps eyeing over his shoulder. We'll let you watch this one. We'll wish you the best I today. Guys, I know these guys want to fight, too. So I'm trying to keep it, you know, pretty quick for them. Yeah. <laughs> guys. All right. Now, Narcissist is run by Dominic Yankaskis. This is a new and improved Eight, version of seven, Dark Princess. Six, mm -hmm. His daughter's five, robot from last four, year. Three, versus Hurt, Hurt Caboose, two, which had one, great success five, at Motorama just five. a couple months ago. Whoa. Oh my goodness, you, oh, the, these two weapons are just... All right, and devastating kind of grinding noise got coming from his box. Up on the corner. Sorry. Uh, here in this match, we've got Angel Vidal and Hurt Caboose, and uh, he was momentarily on its head. Narcissist is peeling away the uh, the wedge on Hurt Caboose. That undercutter is absolutely doing work here from, from Narcissist. Hurt Caboose is on its Ooh. head. Oh, and it's peeling oh. away wheels from Hurt Caboose. Start to see a lot Kankaskis. of debris. Dominic Kankaskis loves this performance. Hurt Caboose just uh, stumbling around inside of the box here. Really needs head. to re re get, get its orientation back. Narcissist uh, just staying absolutely on top of his opponent. Oh. And Hurt Caboose is being counted out. And that's your wow. match. That is a knockout from Narcissist on Hurt Caboose. Fantastic work, Yankaska's family. Big smiles over there. Let's take a quick look here at this replay. Wow, in this early exchanges, you know, Hurt Caboose was really getting under uh, Narcissist and popping it in the air. But uh, the tide changed here when Hurt Caboose was knocked onto its head. Right. And Narcissist was able to peel away part of that, that uh, ground sca scraping fork. <coughs> we see uh, both Angel and Dominic making their robots safe. Now, the interesting thing about Dominic Yankaskis and Narcissist is that when he was running, um, when, when his daughter was running um, Dark Princess last year, uh, he tells me that the bot was running at about 60% power. He's cranking it up to 100% power and seeing if that will result in better performance, more damage. And I mean, that's a pretty convincing win, earning a knockout against a top tier robot in Hurt Caboose. Yeah, and Hurt Caboose also with a configuration that would, you know, you would think has that tactical advantage over a horizontal spinner. That small front plow strip in the front with that, uh, with that egg beater drum, you know, that's, that's like the perfect thing that I would want to bring against a horizontal spinner like that. Yeah, that undercutter though caught a corner on that, that wedge and uh, was able to peel it back and with Angel on his head, really difficult kind of spot right. to, uh, to, to win the match from. 
All right. It looks like we're cleaning the cages and getting uh, getting these these cages ready for the next match. It's a big thing that we that we have to do throughout the day, sweeping up the sada, sweeping up these kind of flammable robot parts in there. Um, you really don't want to lose a match because you're running over somebody else's debris from an earlier fight. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, keeping keeping these cages clean is is a huge, huge uh, part of our job here at Norwalk Havoc. And I wonder what uh, what Jameson goes thinking, you know, now that uh, now, now that that he's he's seen that match. We heard him right before that match uh, during the interview mentioned that he had some uh, a repeating issue with. Uh, with his old uh, weapons system uh, last uh, last in the, in the finals in December, uh, we watched that like the entire housing around that weapon kind of break free in multiple yeah. fights. So uh, I'm curious to uh, to see what upgrades he's made um, to uh, you know what's holding that together and to see how that fares for him today. Okay, speaking of Jameson, let's check in again with Katie. You know, guys, you were asking what is Jameson thinking after he saw that matchup. What's your takeaway? That's a nasty robot. Yeah, oh man, um, that's gonna be a really interesting matchup. We're kind of hoping to fight the beater bar because we wanted to test out the upgrades to a similar beater bar type robot. This will be a big challenge in, it, so, in of itself, so. And as we're getting started here, it looks like your buddy Aaron is in that one as well, so we'll let you go watch it. Okay, good. Loading into uh, cage two, I can see Stoneforge versus Pensive Prosciutto. Ooh, Ooh. Pensive Prosciutto. I love Pensive Prosciutto. I believe that this is a five pound walker bot uh, run by Aaron Fan, I believe. Eight, seven, One six, third of that's, that's uh, five, Fan Wango. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, interesting. There we go. Yes, yeah, you is. see those tumbling wheels. Uh, they're, they're not actually wheels, they're moving so fast. That's just what it looks like it is. We've got this ring spinner uh, coupled with the walking motion uh, there on Pensive Prosciutto. Now, because it's unconventional locomotion, we we are going to give Pensive Prosciutto two extra pounds, which should be great at keeping the robot planted to the floor and delivering these huge, huge hits on Stone Forge. Perhaps uh, at some point later today, we can get out there in the pits and take a closer look at um, exactly how this bot works. It's just so interesting the way, you know, some of these uh, these uh, engineers have configured these walkers and shufflers. Um, and this is the first one that's in a, in, a, in a ring spinner. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and, and you know, Aaron Fan, very good friends with Jamison Go. They've been building robots together for a very long time. And it, you can clearly see that the, these walking legs are very similar to the walking legs we're going to be seeing on Silent Spring later today. Stoneforge run by Team WBI, team member James Wynn, um, who is an engineering student at WBI. And um, an Aaron fan, he's a uh, BattleBots oh. builder. Oh! And I believe that he most recently competed on BattleBots with Valkyrie. Getting a little bit of spin there from the body itself. I think maybe Aaron was trying to spin up the bot a tiny bit to get that ring spinner going. Oh! Big weapon on weapon move there from Stoneforge. Oh, huge hit on Stone from Stoneforge on Pensive Prosciutto. And that, that ring spinner on Pensive Prosciutto is slowing down. Oh, here we go. Look at that. 60 seconds left here in this fight. Stoneforge popping Pensive Prosciutto in the air. Yeah, it looks like the ring spinner on Pensive Prosciutto just isn't spinning up as quickly as Aaron would like it to. That is both his weapon and his defense. Without that ring spinner, he is absolutely at the mercy of Stoneforge and that punishing drum. 
there we Both go. of these bots definitely showing some wear and tear here. Stoneforge, though, incredibly mobile. Running that belt straight down the center of that drop. Penta for Shudo would love to get out of the pink corner with 15 seconds left here in this match. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. This one will go to the judges. And I think that, yeah, the judges are going to have to um, really reflect on uh, a lot of different uh, stages throughout this fight. Let's take a look at this replay. Oh, big hit there. I love that. Whenever you see a spinner, you know, you're always looking for air time. If Aaron is able to keep that spinner going the entire time, I mean, I think he's got a really good shot with this robot, just given the weight um, of, of the bot. But, you know, we saw the ring spinner go down, and uh, that spelled Pensive Prosciutto's demise. Right. The, the ham has been carved. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of odd name. I don't, I, don't, I don't really think of prosciutto, you know, like uh, fancy meats as being particularly pensive. All right. Let's check in with the judges. Do we have judges up on, on video? My God. Whoa! Oh, it's Jack Tweedy. Angel Ross, uh, Andrew Russell, and Don Dorfler. However, they're, uh, those, none of those names are correct. We've got Don Dorfler on the top, Jack Tweedy <laughs> in the middle, and Andrew Russell on the bottom. This, uh, these, these are three BattleBots builders. Uh, so yeah, huge at the top. Uh, we've got Ragnarok in the middle, and uh, we've got Deep Six. My goodness, hello. Okay, uh, now one of the cool things is uh, they're gonna be putting in their scores, and, um, are those the scores? Stoneforge, have they've done it? Okay, all right. It's wow, we have split, a split decision. Split judges' decision for Stoneforge, which advances. Okay. Can uh, Jack and Andrew and Don, are, are they able to talk to us at all? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Oh, my gosh, Don <laughs> Dorfler. How the heck are you? I'm all right. How are you? Nice. Now, Don, you went for Stoneforge. Tell, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you saw in that match. Uh, it was pretty dominant in the beginning with uh, Pensive Pursuto. Um, they took a drive side out of Stoneforge, um, and then they were, they had, I believe they had more aggression, uh, but um, in the end, went after their weapon got down, I weigh that as more damage. Not that their weapon was down, it was just, just got on, like, less effective, and then that really got uh, Stoneforge to capitalize more and basically get some more control points at the end. Fantastic. Thank you so much, judges. All right, we've got uh, cages loaded up. We're going to go over to cage three. I can see Gemso versus a new and improved Wormhole. Eight, seven, six. I'm actually five, really looking forward to seeing four, this match. Wormhole three, is basically two, brand new from the last time one, that we saw it. Fight. Robots fight. Ooh. Oh. Now, Chris, can you see those pleated wheels on Wormhole? Yes. Oh! Oh, no! Very interesting bot. Now, those pleats oh. are <laughs> digging into the wood, and uh, Steven Bogus is not getting the type of traction he'd like to see with Wormhole. Both weapons still Those fully are operational. Very oh. interesting, uh, like uh, like a titanium wheel, perhaps. Um, yes. You know, this is something that we we've seen a lot of teams uh, beginning to adopt. Works perfect on these. Oh, oh no! no! There's the weapon belt from Wormhole. The weapon on Wormhole is now permanently down, and it is up to Gemso and Aaron Taggart to come in here and capitalize. Can they uh, earn a two minutes left on here? the clock? Wow, punting wormhole into the air. You can see part of that wheel guard getting peeled away from wormhole. It looks like he's kicking a football in the air, Chris. <laughs> Incredible. Ah, oh, boy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh! Is, it, is it giving him a chance oh, to tap? No! Oh, I'm hearing send oh. from the Bogus family. Oh, no. 
Steven is just the picture of concentration <laughs> there. I didn't hear no bell. Wow. Oh. Oh, what? I was about to say, could you imagine if he had tipped up uh, <laughs> Jeb So on the corner there? Wow, incredible. Never tap, don't give up. I love it, Steven. It's the warrior spirit, Chris. It is. We got one minute left in the match. You can see all of these little circles being just uh, drawn all over the floor. That is the cleated wheels of Wormhole. Oh, and it looks like they might be high centered on one side. Yeah. You can see the body being split apart on Wormhole like those. Oh, oh, no! oh my goodness. Oh, it's graphic. Oh. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> this just went uh, National Geographic. I am feeling sick oh, to my stomach. A little smoke. Wow. Oh, oh boy. we've got smoke, possibly a fire. Could be a, it could be a motor. Uh, yeah. It could be lots of things. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wormhole <laughs> looks like it got into a high-speed car accident, uh, th Yeah, don't drink and drive, kids. Wow. All right, let's go to a replay here. It's a pretty evenly, uh, you know, matched uh, first 60 seconds with some huge hits. Oh, that was a key hit because he, uh, because Jemso was able to land a big hit on the uh, the back of, of Wormhole. And you can see the body Oh yeah, that's where it just started apart. to happen. Great match, but we have uh, something very exciting here in the queue. Yes. I see some activity over in the big box, yes. cage four. Cage four, exactly. 12 pound sportsman. Now, Chris, what is a 12 pound sportsman? Now, I got the 12 pound part. What's the sportsman part? Uh, so, we, uh, you know, most of the time in our brackets here, we're seeing weapons that are uh, that are high energy, vertical spinners, horizontal spinners, but Sportsman is a uh, is a is a different tournament Eight, where the seven, the bots are trying six, to use a different five, means to either pin four, or push around three, or thwack. Two, uh, so one, we see that there's fight, a hammer bot here on one fight. side and another shovey bot on the other. Um, and this is these are bots that are built to be resilient and to go the full uh, distance. And it's really the uh, the chess match of uh, combat robotics. Now, Chris, I can see Casey Jermiason and Casey Jermiason over there running this black robot. Now, is this ice cream sandwich that or is looks this redacted? Like, <laughs> that is ice cream sandwich. Okay. Uh, I can tell because of the, the empty carbs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're facing accident. And uh, you've got this axe, uh, axe robot here. One of the cool things about Sportsman is that uh, they're not designed to be super destructive. This is a great opportunity for you to get some good driving practice in without the risk of losing your entire robot. It looks like Ice Cream Sandwich is just a push bot, is that right? So yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. I, I, I had a chance to talk to the KCs last night uh, apparently, the, uh, the the overall design <laughs> for Ice Cream Sandwich came together uh, uh, very quickly uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, and um, it's a it's a it's a great looking bot. Uh, I think oh. they were. Oh wow! Chris Accident had some aggressive tapping there on the top. Yes, was able to pull Ice Cream Sandwich off of oh. the rail. Oh no! And a somersault. There are so many holes in the uh, the forks of ice cream sandwich that accidents can get stuck in. Now we don't have a we don't have a time clock here on the screen, but uh, I, I would imagine that most of these sportsman class um, contests oh. are going to go to the oh. judges. More aggressive tapping from accidents. This is uh, this is Norwalk Havoc Robot League, home of aggressive tapping. Let's see some more tapping accident. Ice cream sandwich has been on its head now for over a minute. 
accident, pushing it up against the rail, landing multiple good pins here. There we go, ice cream sandwich back on its wheels. But it looks like the forks on ice cream sandwich are just a little too high. They end up just pushing accidents or allowing accidents to get under it. I can hear the countdown. Three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapons, Casey's, and drive to the door. Good match. Good opening match for 12 pound sportsman. Now, Casey Jermiason and Casey Jermiason, uh, two of my favorite uh, builders. This one will go to the judges, and uh, we'll see if aggressive tapping uh, is going to be enough to, to win a 12-pound sportsman fight here. Uh, the Casey's, very cool. They're bringing three robots to the competition today. Yep. And outside of combat robotics, they build board games. And, and from what I understand, uh, they are also uh, making some upgrades to some stuff that's not in the uh, in the realm of bots. What? I think that they're expecting another Casey. What? Yes. In wow. The same month that uh, we're expecting another Luke bot. Oh my God, Chris, are you announcing that I'm pregnant on a Norwalk Avenue? You heard it here, folks. I am. I'm. Uh, we're. <laughs> Oh my God, Chris, you're gonna be an uncle, all right? I Chris, am. Chris is my brother-in-law. Yeah, this is a very strangely family affair in Norwalk <laughs> Havoc. I don't know. This has gone completely off the rails, Chris. This is great. Yeah, we're uh, we're, we're expecting a baby in June, so there well, we go. Congratulations! I'm very excited for you and Jackie. Oh, oh my gosh, Eddie! Thanks, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, 12-pound sportsman. As the judges deliberate here, we already are. Uh, we're, we're loaded up. Are we going to go to uh, the judge's decision for, uh, for Eight, the big box? I guess seven, not. Okay. We'll, yep, six, we'll come back. Five. All right. Four. Three. Two. Here we go in cage one. two. Fight. Roll. Fight. Oh. Big box rush right out of the gate from Fallout. Oh, and that is a zippy box. Taking it straight to voxel version one. And pushing voxel version one up against the house box. I love the foam brick that's just hanging out in there. <laughs> oh, All right, that's we can a have good a pin from Fallout on Voxel. They can hold that pin for 10 seconds. Aww. Oh, and is Voxel wedged under the, uh, the rail? It was momentarily. Voxel's this black robot with the uh, super wide drop. And what here we go, Voxel's going to work picking apart its opponent. I mean, the Voxel bots, they're just, they're some of my absolute favorite in this weight class. Uh, really beautifully made, great design, and very destructive, uh, resilient. Um, and, you know, we see them often, uh, you know, late stage brackets, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll very likely see them in the finals for 2022. Yeah. Voxel version one now picking apart its opponents where uh, Fallout had the early advantage with the ground game. Voxel has now damaged that lifting arm on Fallout. But whoa, look at this. Fallout's landed another, another pin. pin. Whoa! Good drive from Fallout. Fallout is on its head. It is suffering, but it's still managing to land another pin. Can it do a third one here? Oh. Fallout now back on its wheels. This is the correct orientation for Fallout. Oh! The Spork's doing a good job of keeping Voxel and that weapon at bay. Let's see if they can get another pin here. You can see the, uh, the driver of Voxel just working that Frantic. controller. I can hear Cage side the driver of Fallout saying, hit me, hit me. Wow. Follow driver Matthew Landry is a glutton for punishment here. He wants to uh, <laughs> see his robot leave in a plastic bag. You can hear him shouting at the driver of Voxel. 30 seconds left in the match here. Incredible. Fallout refuses to die, would love to land another pin. 
next one will very likely go to the judges, and we're going to find out if the Norwalk judges uh, are going to <laughs> going to care more about damage or There's control. There's another pin up against Good the house box. Good pin, Matthew. Wow. My God. Huh. All right. And as we count down, three, two, one. That is it. Box will turn off the. Uh, all right, first we're gonna go over to Lindsay and uh, and get the judges' results from that uh, first sportsman match. Lindsay. All right, so you're gonna have to wait for the results on this one, but for the match, for Accident and Ice Cream Sandwich, aggressive tapping for the win, Accident takes that by the judges' decision. Amazing. So let me, uh, let me throw this on over to Katie, who has Jackrabbit. Well, more on the whole Davis family. Of course, we saw earlier with Jack Move, Andrew and his son, uh, Julian, now a time. It happens to be Cameron who's behind uh, behind the bot, and this is his nine-year-old son. And of course, I asked Drew, I said, are you nervous as the dad here when you're wearing that hat? And he said, I'm nervous, I'm excited. The hardest thing is I can't do anything about it. And uh, it's all up to Cameron at this point. So that is up against uh, Amen Brake, who has a weapon that is a drum spin. Guys? Okay. We've got loading into, uh, loaded into cage three. The box is locked. Amen Break versus Jack Rabbit. We're going to see uh, the Davis family here. One of my favorite family teams here at Norwalk Havoc. Drew Davis, he is a 10th grade uh, English teacher from Schenectady. Uh, so yeah, one of my favorite people. We're going to go back to Lindsay for the judge's decision on that last Beetleweight fight. All right, unanimous judge's decision for Voxel. Wow. Oh, wow. Were you surprised at all, Chris? You said, oh, wow. Oh well, yeah, I mean it was it was great to see so many pins, but yeah. I mean uh, ultimately I think that the damage kind of won out. There was a lot of shrapnel just kind of flying around that box yeah. from the from the uh, the multi bot, and um, you know it's 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 one of those things that you uh, that you have to weigh. And there we have a we have a judge's criteria where they kind of look wow. at what's happening between damage and control and aggression and eight. Oh, and here seven, we go. We're we're ready to six, go in box number three. Five, four, three, two. One. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, good hit from Jack Rabbit straight to Amen Break. This is undefeated bracket round two. <laughs> Amen Break won its first match. I think this we might have just first lost time. another camera. <laughs> this is our first time seeing Jack Rabbit today. Oh, and you can see the, the weapon housing. Oh, no, that's one of the uh, the forks on Amen Break. And that, that finger tech beater bar is bumping along the floor. That weapon housing is coming apart at the seams just 30 seconds into this match. That is not where you want to be. You see the two Davis kids here driving the main bot and the mini wow. bot. And they are doing a fantastic job. Oh, it looks like that egg beater is just breaking away now. That egg beater is falling off of the robots. Amen break here is looking worse for wear. We see the younger Davis driving Bug, that green robot. And I think we might see that weapon completely fall out of the robot. Oh, there goes the pin. There goes the pin. That robot is, oh, here we oh, go. Oh, wow. There it is. There's the weapon on the floor. Amen break now is uh, weaponless. Yeah, trying to reattach it, Chris. I don't think you can. Amazing. These kids are going to work. Look at that. Amen break down a wheel. Jack Rabbit just circling, waiting for his opponent, which is getting counted out. Oh. Not much Amen Break can do to come back from this one. <laughs> wow. Wow. And you see there, in typical Jackrabbit fashion, they are not afraid to go weapon to weapon with any bot. Incredible. Jackrabbit is one of the very best robots here in the field Knockout. today. I am expecting Drew Davis to qualify multiple bots. And if we see performance like that for the rest of the day, we might see him you know, qualify both of his bots today, which would be amazing. How great would that be? Yeah. I do like seeing that uh, Drew is bringing his sons into the sport. 
um, you know, they are a great age for, uh, for combat robotics. You know, uh, kids these days, they're growing up with a controller in their hand, like probably uh, playing video games and uh, also driving a lot of these, these combat robots at home to get experience. So uh, you're really seeing a lot of that experience on display. All right, I can see us loading into Cage 2. I can see Eruption. Yep, yeah, and Michael the robot is, uh, has made a return. Yep, that's going to be Ratchet. Oh, it is Ratchet. We've got Sarah Parecki with Ratchet. Oh, and here, look, it's the Davis boys. They're making their robots safe, working there with their dad. They are having the best day ever, Chris. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right, Eruption versus uh, Ratchet. This is going to be a tough, tough match for Sarah Parecki and Ratchet. Eruption, uh, driven by Brian Boxel, went to the finals in December. One of the toughest robots here, one of the top ranked robots here. Brian is a, a student at WPI. There we go. All right, uh, we're gonna go over to Katie, who is uh, gonna check in here with Sarah. Yeah, as we're starting off our day here, really understanding what Sarah's all about, she kicked the whole thing off for us. Now you're back out in one of the cages. What have you learned in these last few hours that you can now take it to this one? Um, well, I had a couple of things. It was um, the biggest thing I found in the last fight is my drive is very squirrely. So I'm gonna have to be a bit more precise with the control. Um, additionally, my wheels fell off, which was not what I wanted in the last fight. So I've reinforced it a little bit, added some glue. So I'm hoping that it won't come off in this one. A glue, duct tape, whatever it takes at this point, of course. And we talk a little bit about the longevity of today. How does one stay strong mentally? And I mean, if physical to that point too. Lots of coffee. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah, I get you there. <laughs> Good luck out there. Yeah, uh, so Brian Boxel here with Eruption. Uh, he's a Bloodsport team member uh, there on BattleBots. He's an engineering student at WPI, running one of the most feared robots in the brackets today. And uh, yeah, went super deep last, uh, last, last season. All right, let's check in with Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hi, so I actually want to throw it back to uh, Pensive Prosciutto. A lot of people were so interested in how a shuffle bot could work with a ring spinner. So I don't know if, if we have a chance to talk to uh, that builder later on today. I think that'd be really cool. I, I might have something to do with how like Silent uh, X shuffles. It, it'll be interesting to see, but there's been a lot of chatter in, in the, the chat going on for Pensive Prosciutto. So, um, uh, yeah, we also have a lot of BattleBots builders in the chat right now. We have Logan Davis, we have Calvin Eba, we had Jeff Waters, who mentioned that he might be coming here in May. So, Ooh. you know, a little bit of rumors going on about what we might see, which is really exciting. All right, let's check in with Katie. Yeah, a little bit more on that uh, pensive pursuit. I was talking with Aaron and uh, with Jameson Go, in fact, who obviously as buddies, they're kind of tag teaming right now a little bit more. He actually said that bot was overheating. He was having some some issues with the wheels kind of free spinning by themselves. So that bot itself is one that they're really excited about. They're interested to see how it's going to play out today. But already after that first battle, they're already kind of navigating some of the kinks and the issues and the gremlins uh, that a new bot would be having. Got it. Yeah, Aaron Fan and Jameson Go are really good friends, and uh, you can see that kind of uh, locomotion inspiration from Silent Spring in Pensive Prosciutto. All right, uh, looks like we're all loaded up in cage two. Eruption versus Ratchet. Winner's bracket round two. Sorry, undefeated. Undefeated bracket round two, Chris. The undefeated Eight, bracket. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh. Ow! Oh! Huge hit there. Let's see if Ratchet's weapon can come back. Yeah, Ryan it's a oh. I see some of that armor is just shredding right now. Launching Ratchet up into the uh, the sky. I don't think the weapon on Ratchet is coming back, but I can hear the weapon on Eruption spinning down. Is that a tap out? I see a loose belt there. What's oh, going on wow. here? What? Oh, wow. What? Brian Boxel goodness. is frantically trying to move his transmitter. Eruption is dead. This is a huge upset. Wow. Sarah Parecki's done it. 
Incredible! Wow! Amazing. Knockout. That is, uh, that is, I definitely want to see the replay of that, uh, that initial exchange. And then maybe we can, uh, we can see what happened there. Here comes the replay. Right. There was this huge oh, hit off Sarah. the ceiling. <laughs> Hit the ceiling and, and stripped out her, her weapon belt. Knockout. The weapon was dead. An eruption, all it had to do was stay alive for another two minutes. But it didn't. It died, and that happens sometimes. I think, actually, uh, Ratchet was just doing an aerial attack downward. <laughs> yes, it was strategic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, great performance. Two wins in a row here for Sarah. She kicked off uh, the, uh, the action here at the start of the day. And I wonder how, how deep she's going to go into, uh, into the competition. You never know. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see, um, you know, that's an unconventional weapon yeah. uh, kind of coming out of the blue. Uh, if, if, if she uh, makes her way, to the later, uh, uh, to the later uh, end of the bracket, I think that's going to be so exciting for her. All right, uh, Katie's uh, cage side with our two competitors. Hey, Katie. Yeah, well, both of them, in fact. That may have been one of the quickest knockouts. Brian, Sarah, first and foremost, what is it, what do you think Sarah had on you? Or was it the bot? Well, that first hit was really quite something. Both robots just exploded in both directions. I think she hit the roof. Uh, I think I got the better of that first exchange, but must have knocked something loose uh, on the wiring on the inside. So I'll have to go back into the, into the pits, fix it up, and you know, try and make a, a run through the loser's bracket. Sarah, you're two for two here. Uh, what do you think you had on, at the bot? Um, well, I think I was great that I have a weapon that should have worked much better than it did. But um, as you can see, my belt is totally not where it's supposed to be anymore, um, which definitely was from that hit. It was a great hit. Um, fortunately, my drive held up really well, which um, I think was what got me the win. Um, I got it to hold up longer than the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the game, isn't that right, Lindsay? Yeah, I mean, looking at the chat during that fight, it was just a sea of wows and woes and oh my God. So, I mean, this was really one that like captured a lot of people. Uh, as Ian uh, said himself, it was the oof heard around the world. So yeah, this one really, uh, really resonated with folks. So great job to Ratchet. Yeah. Eight, Huge. seven, All right, six, we're gonna go over to cage five. three. Four, got black I was not ready for that. Two, Versus one, Twisty. Fight. Robots fight. This is back-to-back -back action, Chris. Black Adder run by AJ Chorizo, who is back-to-back -back -back uh, hatching. <laughs> and Twisty, this is run by Santana Starks. Pain Train team member Santana Starks. Huge. Oh, wow. Oh, oh no. that mini body oh, dead. No. A battery flail. Oh, no. What Santana really wants to do is stay on top of Black Adder and prevent that horizontal spinner from spinning up. Oh, that, that. But it looks like the weapon on Twisty is yes. off. Chris. Yeah, that's been, that has been knocked off of the, uh, off of the weapon housing. Black Adder certainly has the advantage now. This has been an incredibly destructive match, and I was not expecting Twisty to lose its weapon. That's a good pin from Twisty on Black Adder. You can see a good shot here of AJ trying to get out of that pin. The weapon on Black Adder is still running. Oh, and it's sounding not that happy, Chris. Yeah, it's kind of gnarly. Oh. It's like a lawnmower you haven't started up for three seasons. Ethan Shipley driving the minibot wants to stay right in the middle of this uh, this action here. <laughs> Let's, I have a feeling that we're going to see a battery get sucked into something momentarily. I think that uh, Twisty has now caught its own minibot. Is AJ able to... Uh, to regain motion here and knock out Twisty. You can see the left side drive on Black Oh, Adder not the hat! Not, great. not the hat! Kicking that 3D printed hat. Oh! And what's happened? Okay, good. The weapon is still running on Black Adder.
Santana starts with it. Santana starts here. I would love to land another big pin. This one looks like it may go to the judges with 30 seconds left in this match. Oh, wow. wow. That, that is rattling. a death rattle. Death rattle, yeah, that's a good description, Chris. A black adder. But you know what? The weapon didn't die. It went all three minutes. This one will go to the judges. We'll get back to the judges there in a minute, but we're gonna hop over to cage two that's already loaded up and ready to go. All right, in cage two, we've got Sepiol run by Lucas Buermeyer from Team Ribot and Team Electric Ray on BattleBots versus Jensen, a Northwestern team. Eight, seven, These are two college, six, two five, college students. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. You can see Sepiol here uh, exiting the pink corner. It's the one with the orange wheels versus Jensen. This is a brand new beetle weight from Northwestern. The Northwestern students were telling me that they typically build 15 pounds and more, uh, you know, robots that, that weigh 15 pounds or more. This is their first time building beetle weights. And the weapon on Jensen looks to be dead. Oh no. Oh. Oh wow, big that was a big there. hit. Lucas Buermeyer's robot here. The weapon is still going. Tap is out. the drive going? It is. That is a tap out. Tap out. All right. Uh, that was a fast knockout for Sepiol. Let's check in with Lindsay, who has the judge's decision from earlier. All right. So it's a unanimous decision for Twisty. Okay. Really? Yeah. Down the board. Hmm. That is surprising. Twisty lost its weapon, but I guess it landed enough pins to, to get aggression and control. Interesting. Yeah. I think I would have called it for Black Adder myself. I probably would have done the same. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, pick some of the judges' brains in, in a little bit here. Yeah. This is a very serious sport. Yeah, absolutely. We have to take it seriously. Uh, yeah, Chris, uh, absolutely. I, 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 I'm assuming from this hat wear, it's high noon here in uh, Norwalk, Connecticut. Is that right? Uh, get along, little doggy. Oh my oh. god, I got a second one. Here yeah, we go. Yours is not quite as big as mine. <laughs> okay, wait, here, let's see. Wait, can I? Oh, I can. Look at this. Here we see uh, uh, some of the boxes that the control room is cutting away from the action happening here at the main desk. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're cleaning out these cages. You said how much you liked pink before, and they took it seriously. I mean, that's true. Uh, I think we look fantastic right now, Chris. Yeah, I, I might wear uh, this at my wedding uh, later this year. That's good. That's good. Why is my hat so small? I, I don't... This is... Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. We're loaded into cage three. I can see them here. Vacuum versus a drift. This is our first time seeing a drift here today. Vacuum, this will be their second <gasps> fight of oh. the day. Oh, and the drone is back. Look at that little guy. Chris, this is a different drone from earlier, but... Uh, oh, really? Okay, I yeah. I am no less excited about seeing it. I am really looking forward to seeing Vacuum's second performance here in the box. Now, if you had a drone that weighs about the same amount as a marble, like, what would your strategy be in, in, Eight, in the match with it? Seven, Drive it straight six, into the weapon. Five, yeah? four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. These are two horizontal oh. spinners. Oh. There goes, the, there goes the, uh, the drone, and the drone is now dead on the floor. Now we see a drift. This is the red wow. horizontal against vacuum. Oh, and vacuum oh, no. the wheel. Oh, that's not good. With 20 oh. seconds into the match, they've already lost the wheel. Tap out. Wow. Is that two wheels, Chris? I think, I know, one's still on there, I think. Oh, it's hard to tell from this angle, but oh, that is a wow. fast, fast match. 
And that is a definitive win yeah. for a drift. Just a couple of huge hits right off the bat. Um, there's no coming back from that. Wow. There's the belt. There's the wheel. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. Fast match. I love a fast match, Chris. All right, let's uh, head over to cage two. We've got Red Eight, Hawk versus seven, R. Seesaw. Six, R. Seesaw five, again, the high four, schoolers three, uh, from Brooklyn. Two, one, uh, up here Robots against one of the most fight. dangerous spots uh, in the weight class, Red Hawk. Um, let's, I, I, good luck, guys. Oh, oh no! It's all right, they had three more. They had three more wheels. The high schoolers have lost a wheel. Red Hawk is just circling oh! its prey. Run away! They are, uh, they're trying to, to, to play the defensive game. Oh, oh, no! There's a second wheel off of RC Saw. Oh, my goodness. Is Red Hawk's weapon down? Oh, wait, no, no. No. Josh Belanger knows what he's doing. Oh, oh. there's a third wheel. Oh, no, Chris. Oh. <laughs> what were these wheels uh, <laughs> attached to the bot with? Uh. Are they magnetic, Chris? It's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> Wow. wow. Tap out. All right. That is a tap out from the high schoolers. Their second match of their combat robotics career is a loss. Good round of applause from the audience. They love a rookie bot. Red Hawk is not a rookie. Josh Belanger and his dad, they've been competing here for years. Yep. Uh, Josh is maybe, a, uh, you know, like, he started here definitely as a kid. He's, he's like a teenager now. And uh, they come to every single competition. They made it to the finals in December. And you can see that, that um, experience on display. The robot changes uh, between uh, competitions and uh, their performance just keeps getting better and better. That drive was just so meticulous. Like yep. taking apart every single wheel, you know, taking each wheel off of the robot. Really, really great work. And you know, for the for the high school kids, first time here, that's a trial by fire. That's a you, you can't get better learning experience than that, going up against such a devastating bot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping though that we can see more more school teams come here because this is such a great learning opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, when when you're building robots that are able to you know carry basketballs and put them into hoops, you know, like um, it's a really very different kind of challenge than a two minute slugfest where your robot's being destroyed. Um, so yeah, like yeah, when, it, it, when it comes to STEM, I mean, like, I think this is a fantastic STEM opportunity for students. Right, right. It, and if you're, you're out there and you're, you're, you're in a high school program that might have the, the right kind of facilities to create a bot like this, you can check out, uh, you know, our website. It gives you all the rules and the breakdowns and, and uh, you know, um, uh, it gives you all the, the information that you need to kind of get uh, started in the sport. All right, good shot here of the audience. Hello, audience. Oh my gosh, you've been sticking with us for hours. Oh, and so many kids, I love it. I hope that everyone's having such a fun day. <laughs> amazing, amazing. All right, uh, we're loading into cage three. I see Caldera versus De Nightmare. The Nightmare run, of course, by the Yankaskis family, and Caldera run by the Boxels. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Ooh. out of the box. Wow. The Nightmare. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. Oh. Is it doing oh. the thing it was momentarily, Chris? Wow. Caldera run by Glenn Boxel. This is a uh, horizontal that was built by his son, Brian Boxel, we saw earlier. We're seeing a, a new front configuration on the Nightmare. This is a, a plow configuration. Uh, I think he just lost a wheel. One of those yeah. big, chunky wheels. One of the big, chunky wheels. Oh, my God. And gone, uh, and Caldera's peeling away those other wheels, intent on ripping them. Straight off the robot. Wow. This is a good pin from the Nightmare on Caldera. That is a, a, a well-timed pin, too, because you need to stop some of that momentum uh, that was being uh, built up by Caldera. Caldera! All right, the Nightmare looks like it could be dead in the water. Dominic, what happened? 
I don't think that the nightmare is coming back. Ooh, wow. Yeah, so this might be one of the first instances that we've seen in a while where there's a double knockout, in which case we need to go uh, to the judges and they'll, they'll break down the fight and make a decision. Okay. It looks like it's a simultaneous knockout, Chris. That's wow. exciting. Wow, I'm really interested to see what the judges have to say. Double knockout. Yeah, this match lasted less than 60 seconds. A couple of big hits. And uh, both robots ended up dead up against the rail. We see Brian Boxer there with his dad, Glenn. Really good driving match from Glenn. I mean, Glenn, Glenn was able to rip off uh, one of those wheels. I'm going to come here to the judges. And their names are all correct. Hello, Jack. Jack is so fast with his, uh, his scores. Got Andrew and Don. They're still deliberating. I thought that was Andrew today. Uh, Andrew looks like he's uh, he's doing a little self palm reading there. <laughs> Andrew, who won that? <laughs> he match? writes all the scores down on his hands. <laughs> That's good. Okay, we've got two votes for Caldera. It's a unanimous judge's decision for Glenn Boxel and Caldera. Now, who has a strong opinion about this fight? I mean, Jack, you were quick with the score. Do you wanna you wanna bring us through your breakdown of that fight? Yeah, I mean. The Nightmare didn't really get to do all that much. Even once they had the opportunity to box rush right at the beginning, they kind of missed. And once that happened, it was just, you know, there wasn't really much opportunity for them to stop Caldera. They managed to get the one pin, but obviously they couldn't disengage. And Caldera did all the damage and showed the most aggression, even going specifically for wheels rather than hitting the wedge. So they were really on top for the majority of that fight. Fantastic. Totally agree. Caldera, that, that was really a very dominant performance from Glenn and really showed a lot of precision taking off the wheel of the nightmare. All right, we're going to check in with Katie. Hello, Katie. Well, hi. We, we talked at the top of the show about Phantom 3 and how we've seen it in different phases. And uh, I just was speaking to him about how the bot was running right now. He said actually very well. Last round went well. Charged some batteries, but Silk is a hard competitor, especially uh, with it being a big vertical spinner. That can have a detrimental effects on his bot. So that's what he's up against in this particular battle. We'll see how it goes down here in just a moment. Okay. Silk run by Christian Cooper from Team Ribot on BattleBots. And uh, Phantom Eight, 3 run by Nick seven, Buckholz from Bloodsport on BattleBots. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robot. robot. Wow. Oh, that high pitched squeal of that spinner. Oh, wow. It sounds like a dentist tool, Chris. It does. <laughs> it, it, it's going to give me uh, nightmares. Now, uh, Silk is, uh, is really a, a very top championship robot. they are run by Christian Cooper. And I don't know if I've seen a wider Silk in my life. Like, the, the wheels on the robot are very far apart, which I love. It gives that robot great drive. And Nick Buckholz finds himself on his head, unable to self-right, without the help of Christian. Wow. So zippy. Oh! Oh, huge hit from Silk on Phantom 3. Silk coming in trying to pick its moment. You can hear the weapon on Silk is been throttled down. I think with the weapon on Phantom 3 dead. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, well, I saw some life. I think they're just trying to give, oh. them, give themselves some room there. It's one of the things that you see, you know, their older cousin Bloodsport having to do, uh, you know, in matches on Battle Box. Chris, I spoke too soon. The weapon on Phantom 3 is running. Nick Buckholz is just intent on not running it while he's upside down, which is nice. smart. That's, that's a good strategy. Oh! oh. Huge hit from Christian. This is one of the challenges of running an overhead spinner against an opponent like Christian Cooper. Christian will not allow you to uh, reset yourself. Here we go. Unbelievable uh, resiliency built into Phantom 3. It's still just hanging in there. We haven't even really seen any of its, uh, its armor or pieces of the bot taken off. 
These are two students who both attend WPI. Team WPI is one of the most dominant uh, teams here at Norwalk Havoc, and we're seeing why the, uh, the weapon on Phantom 3 refuses to die, and Silk looks absolutely unscathed with 40 seconds left here in this fight. Wow. Death by a thousand cuts here. Oh, Ooh. and you can hear Christian spinning up that weapon on Silk even further. He's intent on, uh, on knocking out his opponent here. And he may oh. have done it! Oh my god, Silk is, has pushed Phantom up into the corner. Will this be? Oh, wow. Silk attacking Brett now. Unbelievable. All right, and that is the match. Turn off your weapons and drive to the door. This one will go to the judges. Wow. This should be about the fastest judge's decision I think of so. my entire life. That was an incredibly dominant performance from Christian Cooper and Silk. Silk is back. Yeah. I think we're gonna we're gonna go over to uh, Katie here in a second. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, we're gonna check in with the judges, and uh, we're going to get the. Oh wow! Look at that. It's a unanimous judges' decision for Silk. Look at my face. Not surprised at all. Pretty tough. Okay. Um, all right. We're gonna load into cage three. Uh, here we've got Titanium Knight versus Diamondback. Eight. Oh. All right. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots. Oh, oh, wow. That hit was so hard, we went to the Shadow Realm, Chris. <laughs> Diamondback run by Corey Nason. Pain train team up oh, Corey Nason. There's that, uh, that flamethrower that uh, I just saw it click on. It looks like it's trying its best to get... The, uh, the circular robot here is Titanium Knight from the Dreschler family. This is a flame bot that we haven't seen the flame yet on. Corey Nason, <laughs> he knows what he's doing with Diamondback. This is a, uh, it's a miniature version of Copperhead from wow. BattleBots. It's got the same geometry as Copperhead. The and the same stakes. And look at this, <gasps> Titanium Knight's weapon. It's ready. I saw a little bit of smoke. <laughs> saw a tiny bit of it's fire. It's trying to burn its way out of the box to escape the uh, the wrath of Diamondback. There is an awful lot of wood inside of this box here, Dreschler, so... Oh, no! Oh. Corey, what happened? It's Kenny <laughs> Gyro is way out of this. Oh, no! Oh, boy. All right, can we get Brett the Brick to come over and help out? Ah, Corey? there you oh, go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, boy. All, All right, right. The, t the count out has begun. I hear the count out on Titanium Knight. Wow, that's the knockout. knockout. Oh, Tap man. out. Tap out. Knockout. It's one of those. It's all of them, Chris. <laughs> all right, great job from the Dreschlers. Uh, they get kicked down into the, uh, uh, what, the elimination bracket? What are we calling it? The elimination bracket. Okay, all right. I'm gonna get it at some point. And Corey Nason and Diamondback, absolutely bulletproof in this fight. Looking forward to wow. seeing Corey advance here in the undefeated bracket. I love a flamethrower. It's one of my favorite types of robots. And um, we saw a tiny little bit of flame there in that fight. Yeah, it, it, it definitely began the, the match uh, with it working. But I think it was just after one of those first opening hits that yeah. uh, it kind of lost its ability to, uh, to reignite. All right, we're going to check in with Katie Osborne, who's there with Brandon Zelinsky and Starchild. Yeah, at the top of the show, we were talking about the fact that it's about longevity today. It's attrition. It's making sure you can stay focused the whole time. How do you do it knowing the fact that you're only just now about to go out in battle? 
Yeah, I mean, you got to stay focused. So, I mean, a lot of caffeine this morning, get the coffees going, get bright and early. Uh, it's It's been tough this morning just because it's like, all right, get ready and then wait. So we've been we've been hanging out, but I mean, the robot's ready. We have plenty of spares. So it's just try to stay, stay focused the whole time, take it one fight at a time. So right now we're fighting uh, Saber and we'll see, what, see how we can do it, so. And why is Star Child such a popular bot? Um, well, I'm, I'm happy that it's popular. I, I don't know. It's different. It's a cool little different design. It's a new take on the on the uh, meta, and it's it, it doesn't it doesn't really like follow the same rules as other robots. Also, it's like kind of bounces around and flies all over the place. So it's a lot of fun to watch, in my opinion. So in my opinion as well, I'm sure you guys also agree with that too. So oh, I love Star Thank Child. You. I uh, got the T-shirt and everything. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. We're gonna go over to Cage Two. We've got Alex Peza and Yes Chef Classic versus Chubby Unicorn. Chris, I'd like to see a chubby unicorn Eight, versus seven, like an emaciated six, unicorn. Six, five, four, Who wants to see an emaciated three, unicorn? Two, <laughs> one, five. <laughs> All right, yes, Jeff Classic is the oh. blue and gold robot here versus chubby unicorn, the black and white and gray robot. Yes, Chef Classic, uh, Alex Peza, is known for his aggressive, suffocating drive style. Tipping Chubby Unicorn up against the rail. Chubby Unicorn now finds himself on his head. Ooh. Oh! And Alex will help you out there. Oh! Pushing Chubby Unicorn up against Brett. Trying to file him in a cabinet behind Brett. <laughs> Alex Peza is absolutely intent on winning a knockout here. He's successfully oh. got Chubby Unicorn back onto his feet. Chubby Unicorn's weapon is still running. Oh, nice! It is very dangerous. Kind of got his robot. back uh, to the wall there and just putting that weapon out front as, as a defensive posture. But it looks like he might have some drive issues on the left side of that bot. Yeah, it looks like the left side of Chubby Unicorn is locked up. Alex here trying to figure out how to uh, score damage points without damaging his own robot. He'd love to avoid going weapon on weapon if he can. Ooh. Pushing into the side of Chubby Unicorn, pushing it over onto its, uh, to its side. But yeah, that left side drive on Chubby Unicorn is locked. It is a sitting duck. With 90 seconds left here to go in this match, Alex is already celebrating. Oh! Wow! I've never seen the celebration into a hit dance before. It is, it's hubris, Chris. <laughs> here comes the count out. Four, three, two, one, and that is a knockout. Wow. Alex Peza and Yes Chef Classic earning a decisive win there. Knockout. Incredible. Knockout. Alex Peza is on Team Pain Train on BattleBots. You saw Pain Train Captain Evan Aria standing cage side, helping him out there with strategy. And uh, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of Team Pain Train in these cages here today. Fantastic match. Yeah, really great. All right, we've got a good little shot of, uh, of our production area. We're looking at cage two, which is loaded uh, out. And uh, we're getting Eight, ready to see what's seven, going on in cage three. Six, five. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, now this is a highly anticipated match. Tony D'Ambrosio with Blackbird versus Weta X run by Santana Starks. Tony D'Ambrosio oh. running this black oh, no. egg beater here. He competes on BattleBots with P1. Weta X is uh, running, uh, it's Run by a uh, pain train team member, Santana Stark. Wow. I do see a concerningly large piece of black plastic there inside of the box, Chris. What do you think that is? I don't know. I have no idea. Could it be a piece of... It's a block of plastic, Chris. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Did it come down from oh, the ceiling? Oh, no. It almost, looks like, it almost looks like a weapon lock. <laughs> I honestly is, is have it? no clue what that is. It might be. Wow, Weta X really shaking off those gremlins that we saw 
earlier uh, in its first match of the day. That weapon is not dying, it is going. Look at the intensity of these two uh, drivers here. They are the picture of focus. They're Tony and uh, Hannah. Tap out. Wow. Oh, a tap out. A tap out. Who tapped out there? Tap out. Tony, was that a tap out? I'm so confused. I thought that Tony was doing great in that match. What happened? Wow. What? Yeah, I, st I still don't know what that piece of plastic it's is. It's like the plastic appeared out of nowhere. It's not like it, it's... Oh, wow, he did. He hit tap out. Um, wait a second. I just heard from Gil that Weta tapped out, but it, Tony, Tony tapped out from Blackbird, right? Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, Gil. I'm just started. Out. There we go. They're all clinking beers out there in the production <laughs> office. Let's check in with Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Hello, hello. We have got some super chats here for you. Um, so another one from Twinzer of Dual Force Robotics. It wouldn't be a true Norwalk experience without a new Luke facial expression. So, Luke, <laughs> you are the most memeable of all of us. I don't know why, uh, Twinzer, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. So keep keep those facial expressions going. We also have a super chat from Katie Z. Go Harvester, go. So Amazing. go Harvester. Harvester has some has some fans in the audience here today, and uh, and no wonder. I mean, like these are these are combat robotics super fans. They're from Derby, Connecticut, which is thirty minutes away. So they can bring over the the entire uh, you know Hunter clan. Uh, we're gonna check in with Katie. Hello, Katie. Hey, Tony D with uh, Blackbird here too. Was it was interesting? He said, "Oh yeah, I lost." And then he looked down at his body. He was like, "Oh yeah, I really lost." I, mean, I, I lost. <laughs> it's like in three different pieces. But that's why we do prototypes. That's why this is the first event. I mean, this is the beginning. So after this, you're gonna make something much better and stronger. You know what works and what doesn't now. So this didn't work. <laughs> and I saw that you and Weta X were actually, you guys were having a conversation uh, prior to the event. You guys were helping each other out. That's because y'all are teammates. Yes, How so does that <laughs> So all of our beater bar guys all kind of stick together, right? So what I learned from that fight will work for everybody in our team. So we'll just take all that knowledge and kind of make all of our bots better. So we know what not to do now. Hey, when you lose, you also win. Yeah, and that's a great... Everybody <laughs> wins on Shredded. There you go, guys. <laughs> Huge fan of Tony D'Ambrosio. Huge fan of Blackbird. One of the top-ranked robots here today. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're seeing an iterative design process in real time. All right, uh, we're going to go over to Cage 2. Six, We've got Starchild five, versus Saber. Four, wow. Three, All right. Two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Starchild is just such an interesting bot. Um, you know, that, that the wheel configuration is made famous by uh, BattleBots Team Huge, but with this uh, really incredible whacker vertical spinner uh, where they're able to kind of like, uh, you know, stop their momentum and then drop that whacker down on top of uh, their opponents, um, hopefully able to kind of bypass any type of front defense system that they have. Yeah, one of the cool things about Brandon Zelensky, P1 Captain Brandon Zelensky and Starchild is that there are no different configurations for Starchild. You know exactly what you're going to get when you enter the box with this bot. You are going to get strange physics, huge wheels, fleets, and this punishing overhead attack. Now, uh, Brandon's facing off here against Saber. These are the kids from Florida Polytechnic. And, uh, he is oh, oh, oh and you see, on the top. that is uh, that is textbook star child damage right there. I apologize, not Florida Polytechnic. This is Nick Grumsky from Worcester, Massachusetts. So this is a Team WPI robot. I got my colleges mixed up momentarily. Here comes Brandon to capitalize. Brandon has shown amazing aggression in this match really hasn't taken much damage himself. I love the strange physics on Star Child, Chris. It's such a cool bot. And you know, there's no way to prepare for this kind of fight. If you have a, uh, you know, a small throw vertical weapon that you see on Saber, it's like, 
You can't really train to fight a Star Child. Star Child is difficult to plan for. I guess just armor the top of your robot and pray, Chris. Although the weapon on Saber is still running, which is incredible. You can see bits and pieces of armor being peeled apart from the side of Saber. This match is far from over. With 40 seconds left, anything can happen here, truly. Whoa! Oh, big hit Another. on the top of Saber. We saw parts go flying off. I'm sure Saber would love to keep that part on there, but if they could. You see that uh, that top armor, um, like a 3D printed material, it's really kind of rattling around. Oh my goodness! Oh! oh. 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 Ah. <laughs> here with less than 10 seconds left in the match. That oh. will be a knockout. We'll see if they can uh, try to uh, jettison this battery into uh, one of the safety cans that we have uh, featured all around here in, in Norwalk. Um, we take uh, lipo smoke pretty seriously. You know, once these uh, once these cells are are, uh, are punctured, they, uh, they have a tendency to go up pretty quick and yep. uh, spectacularly. All right, we're going to take a look at a replay here of this match. Fantastic match between Saber and Starchild. All right, everyone stand back at the back. Here we hear uh, uh, Henchman Jim, who is preparing to open up uh, Cage 2 and remove this battery. And it's very quickly being put into the battery disposal unit and now wheeled outside of the facility. He's charging off into the night. I'm gonna check in with the judges. Is this one going to the judges? Okay, technically, yes, I love that production room. That's great. All right, judges, what do you say? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we, saw, we saw a dominant performance from Star Child. I think this is going to be a pretty decisive win here for Brandon. Incredible work. Uh, yeah, I'm not able to put a score through on the thing, so I'm just gonna give it to Star Child on basis of fatality. <laughs> Good. All right. I guess thumbs up for Star Childs. Oh, thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs up. All right. Cool. All right. Unanimous decision. We've got five thumbs for Star Childs, which advances. And Saber. Yeah. It's, it's going to have to go outside and burn out a little bit, Chris. Amazing. All right, Lindsay, let's uh, check in with you. All right, well, we have a couple more Super Chats. First is from Jacob Cranmer, who has some really nice words uh, of encouragement to share. He says, I've been hyped for this event since the 2021 finals wrapped up. And as usual, it has not disappointed one bit. Thank you, Jacob. That's so sweet. And I think whether it's a qualifying round or the finals, it's like you know to expect a lot of big hits and a lot of amazing robots. So I second him on that. And then we actually have a second super chat here. Um, and this one is from Will Phillips. Go Nurk. Put on the bucket hat. Will, I can do that for you, man. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't think it really fits over the top of my... No, uh, it does not fit, Luke. <laughs> All right. If I took this off, you know, it would look a lot better. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an honorary <laughs> NERC uh, team member. Chris, Chris, this is serious, okay? You don't like my bucket hat, Chris. Why? <laughs> Luke, you look like you should have, like, a little pail and a shovel <laughs> and be walking around the beach in a yes. diaper. Yes. This is... Uh... <laughs> this is the greatest hat I, I own. All right? I Eight, don't doubt that. You don't have seven, a lot of hats. I want to. I want to thank the Northwestern five, kids for that. Four, All right, three, let's go on to cage three. Two, one, five. Oh, and that's you know when Voxel starts up because you can feel it. Oh, Voxel versus Harvester. Oh, oh, wow! Harvester won that first exchange, popping Voxel in the air. Oh. Brings it right back with another huge hit on Harvester. Oh! Voxel's got around to the back of Harvester, popping this robot in the air. Oh, there Stripped goes the other wheel. There's the other wheel. There's the other wheel. Wow. Oh. Wow, incredible. Uh, that is uh, textbook Voxel right there. Harvester, they won that initial exchange. They had a little bit more of that reach advantage, but. Voxel's never going to let up. 100% yeah. uh, aggression, 100% of the time. 
Now this wasn't uh, Voxel version one, which we saw earlier. This is Correct. Voxel. This is the latest and greatest version of Voxel. This is a very aggressive robot. Um, and absolutely like that kind of wide egg beater design and that in your face speed is so key to its winning. Uh, now up against Harvester. This is Harvester's first loss ever. This is their first combat robot. They won their first match. They've lost their second match. They are now going to be going into the elimination bracket. Um, but the Hunter family, fantastic. Yeah. Um, they, they say that they, um, they, they came to probably five Norwalk Havocs last year, and they are planning to compete every single qualifying event this year in hopes of making the finals by December. Awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. Uh, you saw that kind of stacked weapon design on Harvester, kind of looking like a piece of farm equipment. And um, yeah, I mean, like, it won one of those exchanges with Voxel. I really thought, wow, that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting concept for a weapon. You know, it's rather than a solid bar, you're looking at um, essentially a, a handful of small vertical spinners um, kind of strung together with spacers in between them. Uh, keeps it nice and light, lets it, uh, lets it spin up fast. All right, we're going to uh, take a quick break and uh, enjoy the drone shot of Norwalk. I'm Jake with Senka Sen, and today we're talking about the linear deburring process. <laughs> So once your parts come out of the laser, they still might have some scale and porosity, minor handling scratches, as well as markings from raw material. They now also have a little bit of a burr on the edge from the manufacturing process. What we do is we remove that through a linear deburring machine. This is also a belt sander, commonly referred to as a time saver. The linear deburring process is best suited for flat sheet metal parts like this, but they have to be of a certain size. The smallest part that we can run through the deburring machine is a one inch by three inch part, whereas the largest is a 24 by 46 inch part. So here at Senka Sen, we use the minimum amount of pressure on that deburring machine to remove that burred edge. So this is what you should expect when you receive your parts. It should be free of a burr on the outside surface of both sides, but it will still have a somewhat sharp edge here as this process doesn't roll that edge. It only just removes that burr on that outside face. It might still have some imperfections and small handling scratches as it goes through the rest of the handling process, but it won't have any raw material manufactured markings on it anymore. Parts that meet our criteria are pre-selected to go through this deburring process and check out. If you don't want your parts to go through that process, make sure you uncheck the box that says deburring. If you have any other questions regarding your design, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at senkasen.com. Is watching all this robot combat making you want to build your first bot? Send Cut Send is a great place to start. Scan the QR code on your screen, which doesn't exist, sorry, to access helpful tutorials on using There Send we go. There we go. Oh, my goodness. OK, scan that QR code to uh, access helpful tutorials on using Send Cut Send for all of your DIY projects. Also, use Build for Norwalk 10. The 4 and the 10, they're numerals. Build for Norwalk 10 uh, for 10% off your next order. Thank you so much, Send Cut Send. Right, really is a cool service. I had them uh, do some custom parts for Darkside last season. You order you, it online, use eight, the design tool. Seven, it's yeah. at your door in days. Five, We're going here four, to Cage 2 Katrina three, versus PGF. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. Katrina Whoa. is this full body oh. spinner. Up against PGF, the overhead bar. Oh, it looks like that, that motor got pulled right out of the body on that horizontal spinner. PGF is, oh, uh, boy. is definitely down. This is Katrina's moment to come in and capitalize. Melty Brain spinner here. Huge, huge hits. Chris, you love to see it. I love a Melty Brain. Yeah. And it looks like uh, PGF is going to try the uh, ram my uh, face into your weapon technique. 
Uh, but it looks like Katrina's built kind of resilient. We saw it earlier today, um, you know, really kind of get hockey pucked around the, the box and it just kept on ticking. So uh, I'm curious how this is going to play out. This is a do or die moment for these two bots. This is elimination bracket round one. The, the builder who uh, loses here goes home early. Katrina? Katrina's dead. What? Is there motion for Katrina? Chris, it, it works. It's PGF was able oh, to, uh, to wow. break, break Katrina's face with its own. Wow, incredible. <laughs> OK. You we're getting can't the write this stuff. No, this is live robot combat. Wow. wow. Theo Hummel, Theo Hummel is, is celebrating. celebrating. Katrina is dead. Knockout. Wow. 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 Knockout. PGF is your winner. Theo Hummel, he, he said he was going to stay alive in the elimination bracket, and he has. He, he survives for yet another round. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Listen, listen to, the, to the passion in... in Destiny. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Good. I want to hire them as motivational coaches. Can we do that? <laughs> Guess it's destiny. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right. Katrina. We're going to uh, bid an early farewell to Katrina. Katrina built by. Oh my gosh. Katrina, built by Dylan McAllister from Lakeland, Florida. He is a computer engineering student at Florida Polytechnic University. And, fun fact, loves Ultimate Frisbee, Chris. Oh, cool. All right. Wow. Here's a replay. You can see just the parts coming off of PGF, yeah, but that you... didn't matter. PGF was <laughs> managed to stay mobile Incredible. Uh, they're going to have their hands uh, full back there Chris, in, I've seen, in the pits. I've seen more of PGF's weapon dead than I've seen it ever running. So there's there's a problem absolutely there with that weapon system. But you don't need it if you can survive. Eight. Probably seven, going to flail. Six, five, All right. Four, Let's check out three, uh, Cage 3 two, here. One, We've got Fully Defined five, versus Robot Tiger Claw. Fully defined is this very wide red robot here versus Tiger Claw, the black and gold beater bar, driven by Chris Caps. Oh. Interesting shot. That was very cinematic, Chris. Fully defined. I think uh, in last season I called it the Jolly Rancher of Death. It's a very interesting <laughs> 3D printed material that has a little bit of uh, flexibility to it. Fully defined, driven by Ian McInerney from Worcester, Massachusetts. This is a WPI robotic suit versus Tiger Claw. Tiger Claw, driven by Chris Caps. And it looks like Tiger Claw may have speared itself into the body of Fully Defined. I think these two robots. Oh, I was about to say I think that they're entangled, but they were able to free themselves. Fully Defined now popping. Uh, popping on its head, but getting back onto its feet. Ooh, another good pin. Yeah. And that ends the pin. Whoa, wow. big pop in the air. Oh, no! Oh, wow! Wow, the whole left side of that robot is Gone. Oh, and it's well. The uh, the armor plate on under on the bottom is it's gone. It's removed. Wow. It pops the under plate off of Tiger Claw. All of the parts fell out of the robot. That <laughs> that is a destructive hit. Look at that. <laughs> now just Tap corralling. Out. Oh, that is just disrespect. Fully defined. Just pushing all of those parts over there for Chris to get by himself. Incredible. Let's take a look at some of those hits. Wow. Fully, fully defined, this configuration allows them to corral other bots in this weight class so well. 
um, and then those, you know, it's kind of leading you into those two uh, smaller forks located right in the center near its vertical weapon, trying to lift you up in those last moments right before it delivers that hit. Wow! Oh, I love that shot. That is a fantastic shot. The bottom of Tiger Claw coming off and all of those guts being spilled all over the floor. Incredible. <laughs> Here we see uh, the team uh, just putting its parts in there. They're gonna have to go back and see if they can build a robot out of all of these, uh, these parts. Now, uh, very exciting. We've got loading into cage two. I can see them. Oh. Jameson Go and Silent seven, Spring six, versus Narcissist five, and four, Dominic Yankaskis. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. There we see those shuffler wheels on Silent Spring. Oh, wow. Is. This is an undercutter versus an undercutter, and I'm seeing bits of blue plastic. Oh, you oh. did. Spring would love to peel off the wheels of Narcissist. You can hear it walking all over the box. Silent Spring is a shuffle box that weighs four and a half pounds. That unconventional locomotion gives it some extra weight. And Narcissist is running at full power. This is an absolutely destructive match. Ooh! Another good hit from Silent Spring on Narcissist. It looks so that one side of Silent Spring's drive is a bit more mobile than the other side. This is an opportunity for Narcissist to come in and start scoring damage points. One of the challenges with Silent Spring is that it has such a good armor package on the back of that robot. It's really hard to get yeah. through. And, you know, we saw Silent Spring lose three matches, essentially, uh, in December by losing its weapon. That weapon looks absolutely anchored to the robot uh, for this match. Interesting. I wonder what's going on with the drive. Like, did perhaps Narcissist was able to damage one of those, those walking keys? I mean, it's, typically you see Silent Spring right. just stomping all over the box. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, it's a very sophisticated and complicated mechanism to make this shuffler happen. It could be a piece of debris. It could be something pinched. You know, um, this is uh, this is the challenge of having a bot uh, uh, like like a shuffler like Silent Spring, but. Uh, it seems to be using its weight advantage. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's really kind of uh, being able to capitalize on these weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits. Um, Narcissus seems to kind of springboard off of Silent Spring uh, just because of that mass advantage. Incredible. 35 seconds left here in this fight. This has been a very destructive match against two top-rated robots, both BattleBots builders. Sable is Captain Seamus and Go driving Silent Spring. Narcissist being driven by Dominic Yankaskis from Slapbox and Gemini on BattleBots. 15 seconds left here. Oof. Final 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This one will go to the judges. Look like Narcissist might have lost its weapon drive in the last 15 seconds of this match. This is a very, very close match. This one is one of those matches where I would hate to be the judge. Uh, I'd hate to be a judge here at Norwalk. Let's take a look at some of these hits. If you're in the YouTube live chat, weigh in. Tell us who you think won, because I certainly can't decide. This is... Uh, Really quite incredible match here. I can't believe that both of these robots went the full three minutes. Weapons running, drive is still pretty good. Incredible. All right, let's check in with the judges. Oh, it's a split decision, Chris. Wow. We've got a split judges decision in favor of Silent Spring. Andrew Russell, voting with his conscience, went with Narcissist. Did oh. he? <laughs> The names are wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Who voted for who? 
There, listen, we have no idea what the names are going to be when the, when the screen comes up, all right? Don Dorfler. <laughs> They're all made up. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, now, Andrew, you voted for Narcissist. Is that right? All right. Tell I us, did, tell yeah. Tell us why. Uh, looking, being able to see that shuffle pod uh, on Silent Spring, it wasn't going as fast. You know, to me, that indicates there's some kind of damage. And really, Narcissist, I feel like, Eight. was the one... Seven, choosing those engagements, six, but I think we're going to the next fight. Five, four, three. All right, all right. Two, Head over to cage three, one, where we have Doctor Frankenstein and Pensive Prosciutto. Oh, interesting. Now the chat was asking about Pensive Prosciutto. Now they can see it. This is run by Aaron Fan, one of Jameson Goes Friends. This is also another shuffle, shuffle drive, shuffle Ooh, walker. Oh, uh, there goes a wheel. Oh, and that's a wheel from Doctor Frankenstein. Oh, no! Oh, two oh wheels. you need those! Oh, you gotta keep the wheels on the robot, Dr. Frankenpine. And Dr. Frankenpine is being counted out. Pensive prosciutto looking like a killer. Tap out. Incredible. All right. I don't know if that was a tap out or a knockout. Doesn't matter. Dr. Frankenpine has been eliminated. Pensive prosciutto remains alive in the elimination bracket. We'll live to uh, elimination bracket round two and possibly beyond. Let's take a look at that uh, that that initial hit that just ripped that wheel off of uh, Pine. Oof. Cinematic. Wow. Love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Frankenpine. All right, uh, we bid an early farewell to Dr. Frankenpine. Dr. Frankenpine was uh, driven by Ishan Sidalingya. Um, and, uh, and great work today with Dr. Frankenpine. Uh, looks like he's a University of Maryland student and uh, really looking forward to seeing him at the, uh, the competition again. All right, let's uh, check in with Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, hello. So I wanted to know what the chat was thinking when it came to that Narcissist and Silent Spring match. Uh, and it was actually a little bit more decisive than I was expecting. Silent Spring won the fan vote by 80%. So I think uh, maybe the judges got it right on that one. But it was I thought it was definitely close. Fantastically close, yeah. 80%. What? 80%. 40 votes, that's pretty good. It's a pretty decisive win for, uh, for Jameson Go. Mm -hmm. Jameson Go is, is always a, a driver to watch in this competition. He has really just kind of elevated the entire sport. He's done things with beetle weights that no one's done before. I really feel like every time I see a uh, Jameson Go robot, it's at least one or two years in the future. Uh, so yeah, it's always such a pleasure to see Jameson compete here at Norwalk. All right, we can see loading in. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. It's Shred It Bro. It's Shred It Bro versus Be Careful What You Wish For. Loading into the box. These are both Pain Train team members. There's a little team on team action. Shred It Bro is the number one ranked all time Beetleweight here, driven by Pain Train team member Evan Arias. But the cage is open. That's concerning. Is Shredded Bro, Shredded Bro is walking off. Wow, something happened with Shredded Bro while I was in the box. We're going to Shredded delay Bro this match. Shredded Bro doesn't walk off, it storms off. <laughs> All right, Alex Peza will uh, have to wait a couple minutes before he can uh, fight his captain. <laughs> and uh, he's going to make the robot safe and hang out here cage side. It looks like we uh, actually don't have any robots at all loaded in. Um, so we're just going to hang out here. We've got a little pause in the action. We're going to go to a commercial break. I'm Jake with Ten Cut Ten, and today we're talking about the linear deburring process.
So once your parts come out of the laser, they still might have some scale and porosity, minor handling scratches, as well as markings from raw material. They now also have a little bit of a burr on the edge from the manufacturing process. What we do is we remove that through a linear deburring machine. This is also a belt sander, commonly referred to as a time saver. The linear deburring process is best suited for flat sheet metal parts like this, but they have to be of a certain size. The smallest part that we can run through the deburring machine is a 1 inch by 3 inch part, whereas the largest is a 24 by 46 inch part. So here at Senka Sen, we use the minimum amount of pressure on that deburring machine to remove that burred edge. So this is what you should expect when you receive your parts. It should be free of a burr on the outside surface of both sides, but it will still have a somewhat sharp edge here as this process doesn't roll that edge. It only just removes that burr on that outside face. It might still have some imperfections and small handling scratches as it goes through the rest of the handling process, but it won't have any raw material manufactured markings on it anymore. Parts that meet our criteria are pre-selected to go through this deburring process and check out. If you don't want your parts to go through that process, make sure you uncheck the box that says deburring. If you have any other questions regarding your design, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at senkasen.com. For laser cut parts in metal, wood, plastics, or composites, check out Sen Cut Send. No minimum quantities, free design feedback, and instant quotes, all made here in the USA with free shipping. Scan the QR code on your screen to get started. Thank you so much, Send Cut Send, for, uh, for sponsoring Norrock Havoc. All right, let's check in with Katie, who's uh, standing cage side with Alex Pezza. Yeah, as, as they're kind of navigating what's happening in the cage, shredded, uh, the team captain walked off. And here you are, Alex, standing by, wondering where your leader went and why. What's the story? Uh, well, he just had a wire mixed up, so his weapon was spinning the opposite way he wanted to compete with. How is it competing with teammates, not only teammates, but your team captain? Uh, it makes things a little more aggressive because you want to kind of show off and beat them, crush them. So like at lunch, like what happens? Oh, we're family again. Oh, okay. So okay. But that's what it is. All right, well, it looks like you guys are getting ready now that he's back. Good luck out there. Wish you the best. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Eight, eight, looks seven, like we're going to go to cage six, three first. This is Invictus versus four, Spartan three, X. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Elimination bracket round one. We Whoa. saw fantastic work from Spartan X earlier here. Let's see if Johnny Supas can remain alive. And look at that. He's knocked the wheel out wow. of off of Fine Victus. Oh, wow. Oh, and that looks gnarly, Chris. <laughs> Oh, Spartan wow. Spartan X is shaking out all of those gremlins that oh, we saw oh. earlier. <laughs> all right, and look away. And the bot is coming look in. Look away. Wow. Oh, Pine Victus. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Don't know if you need to actually wait for the count out here. This is, uh, <laughs> I think this is cut and dry. Johnny Sumpas and Spartan X remains Knock alive out. in the elimination bracket. He will wow. advance to elimination bracket round two. Pine Victus is going home early. Let's take a look at those hits again. Wow, look at you. That's where you see the weapon just kind of, the, the, the drive housing, the weapon housing are all kind of falling apart. Wow. Pine Victus run by Alex Wang from Ellicott City, Maryland. He's a mechanical engineering student at the University of Maryland and part of the robotics club at UMD. We'll be going home early in time for lunch, Chris. A late we'll lunch. To, yeah, probably even get home in time for dinner, too. Back to Maryland. That's great. We'll probably have lunch sometime in the next <laughs> six, six to eight hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, Pine Victus uh, eliminated early. Uh, we're going to go over to cage two. I can see Shred It Bro and Be Careful What You Wish For loaded in. Alex Peza versus Evan Arias. Team captain member versus... against team member. Yeah. The winner becomes the new team captain. Yeah, that's what Eight, I heard. Seven, it's like a, like a, six, a Viking uh, five, challenge. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robot. Oh, oh, oh. There's that classic Shred It Bro box rush. 
This is our first look at Shredder Bro from wow. 2022. Oh. Popping, be careful what you wish for in the air. I see wheels, Chris. Oh, no. And that weapon's dragging. Okay, it's inverted. This is uh, this is not very good for them. I think that Evan will be able to remain captain of the oh. team. He's showing why he's captain. Oh. <laughs> wow. Not afraid to take it's his own teammates bot apart. <laughs> Oh, I heard a tap out. <laughs> tap out, tap out, tap out. Oh Incredible. my goodness. <laughs> Evan Arias goes to like another place mentally oh, wow. during a fight. It's his eyes, they roll over like a great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, the whole screen goes red, Chris. That's it. Yeah. Amazing. This is our first look at Shredder Bro for 2022. And if this is what we can expect from Shredder Bro, oh my goodness. Evan yeah. Arias is absolutely going to be stamping his ticket to the December finals. Here's a replay. And to, to show you exactly why Shredder Bro just belongs at the at the you know the end of every bracket. Um, huge hits. You know, it can control, it can push, it can shove, it's it's got everything. Evan Arias uh, came from Norwalk, Connecticut. He is a homegrown Norwalk, Connecticut competitor. He's been fighting here for years. He has more matches at Norwalk, Connecticut, uh, at Norwalk Havoc than any other competitor in the field. And he, at the very end of last year, ascended to the number one spot all-time ranking. Now that's a dynamic ranking, he has to hold on to it. So really he has to continue to, uh, to win against top ranked robots here in 2022 um, because great robots like Silent Spring are nipping at his heels. All right, looks like we're cleaning out both cages. We're going to go to Katie and it looks <laughs> like Evan Arias. Here we yep, go. Yep, it, you know, just a little team evaluation debrief right there. Congratulations, that was a pretty wicked battle one from start to finish, I guess. First, breaking it down, what happened before? What, what was the kept playing catch up there? So my, uh, my weapon speed controller was kind of backwards, so spinning down, which would have just did a lot of this. And then I might as well have had the banana in at that point. And, and, and good thing you didn't, I guess, because what ended up happening is, is you annihilated your teammate. Well, I tried. He's really good. So, I mean, he put up a good fight. I mean, his other robots, I don't want to play with, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's your takeaway from this point, knowing that the, we have an end game and uh, many hours away? Team Shred's going all the way. The whole team. That's it. No more. Mic drop. I love it. I love Evan Arias. What I an appealing the... builder. <laughs> I love the safety banana there. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm curious if that's a real banana or a plastic banana. That team really fosters good drivers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Lindsay, let's check in with you. All right, so I mean, just over the last four hours now, we've been fighting these robots, and the chat has just been absolutely nonstop about what we've seen. We've seen shufflers, we've seen axe bots, we have seen bots just drive like crazy. I think uh, our camera count of how many cameras have been destroyed by bots is like at three or four so far, and we have a, a lot of fights left to go, and so it's just a, a lot of destruction and just nonstop. So again, if you you are watching at home and you're not in the chat join us because that's that's where the party's at all right we're going to be taking a brief break here we're going to be returning at two o'clock eastern that is less than 10 minutes from now so stick with us here um through here we uh we're going to see you here in 10 minutes or less with more robot fighting Yeah, hang around. We'll be back in 10 minutes. The robot action is, we still got a long way to go. We got some great more, great, great fights coming up uh, in, in both brackets. The
Thank you.